Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke the Dumpster. Drosy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. Welcome to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Why are we subtle? Because it's really early in the morning again. I'm Mark. That's Mike. We're back after a random week off. It just... Yeah, like, yeah. random sabbatical. Uh, you guys know life just hits sometimes... And if you're going to ask me what happened, I really <laughs> everything going on in my mind, I don't remember why. Was what was what was last week? What, last week where was I? Uh, Friday, the court Friday, and then know. Saturday came to head. And in, in, in last week, it, it was a whirlwind. It was like there's a celebration Thursday. There is a show Friday that I think you just ended up oh, wandering yeah. into, yeah. and then. Wait, were you being legitimately forgetting? I was being, I was being legit. I, honestly. Oh, I thought you were playing this up. I thought you were playing it up like, oh, I, where was I? I was in Pittsburgh at SmackDown. No, I <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's how memorable SmackDown was last week. That's fair. Yeah. Now I remember, hey, there's only like two things that I really cared about while I was at SmackDown. Besides hanging out with <clears throat> some friends that I usually don't get to hang out with, yada, yada, yada. So. Right. But, yeah, man. <laughs> well, that's the review of last Friday's show before the draft. So, <laughs> right, right. So, I also got to uh, see you this week as well. You did what, in what, a what? shocking turn of events. We got to hang out on Thursday night, taking a couple innings at the Sea Wolves and that, and you know, actually case. went into extra innings. I did see that. Thank God we left. Oh my God. One was cold as hell. It was very cold. It was sunny out. It was a nice night, but just cold April weather up here in Erie. But extra innings. We left, what, eighth inning? Top eight? Yeah. Yeah. Which, that was a pretty quick game. It was going pretty fast for the most part. It was. It was. I, I told you that I had to stop and get, you know, snuff, chewing tobacco, whatever you guys call it out there. This voice better fix, by the way, by later on today. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <You> <laughs> I'm it. really disappointed. We'll talk about that here in a second. But I, we both saw each other kind of just randomly pulling out because we parked on different sides of Erie. Yeah. I had a stop. I got a coffee for the ride home. I was that, along with snuff. But when I saw you, my hand was still numb. I'm going to be that, that bitch, that cold guy right now. My hand was still numb when I waved to you, like, bye. <laughs> well, what was funny is I actually was like, oh, this is going to be cold out. I put a coffee and a therm- thermal mug in the car for when I got out so you I could warm up. A bitch. You already well, knew. Guess, well, you know what? Well, I knew, but I picked the wrong mug because it was Luke cold at that point. It was going <laughs> cold. It was, that mug was not holding it warm, heat at all, so it was like, all right, whatever. But you make do. You make do. It was still coffee. Yeah, I had nothing in the Jeep, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> So, yeah. When you crank it up, if you have heated seats, you turn the heated seats on. And you just Everything was on. Warm at home, yeah. I was warm. I was warm in stadium, kind of. You know, not warm, but enough. Yeah, Right. And you know where I parked. I was a thousand feet away from the stadium. 
Mm-hmm. That wind picked up on our way on our walk, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" I instantly well, got the, chilled. The way Erie's set up, it's like grid. It's a grid setup. So some of those streets going north to south. If that wind's going north to south, it's a wind tunnel that oh. comes up the hill and just goes right up Holland. It's just a wind tunnel up Holland. <laughs> so at, I we knew it. I knew it standing in the stadium. The flags were going. It was like, oh my god, this is going to be. Cold. Yeah. It was the treacherous. But hey, we got fancy hats. You know, I bought a Kimberly t shirt. It was a, it was a good time there. Did you put so, your sticker on your truck? I'm not gonna put it on my truck. Oh, okay. The stickers are actually I buy them for my I have like a binder thing for my work for work. So I put them on there. So I already had a Howling Dead sticker, but I'm gonna put it on I think I bought the Eclipse one and a Seawolf actual logo. So they're going to go on that work binder. I'll show you what it looks like. Hold on. I uh, I made it home, took a nap, yet I went to work because I worked 12 days all week. And, oh, I yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I like it now. Yeah. Yeah. So at least it decorates up this plain black zipper portfolio. But so you took a nap, went to work. Yeah. Did work. Da, 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 da. And at some point, you know. I took a five minute break. I'm like, oh, because Mark is Mark. I have my sticker in the Jeep. So got some window cleaner, yada, yada, yada. Gussied it up and put the, the sticker right underneath my, my panther head, the pit panther head. So yeah, yeah. it looks pretty sweet now. I was going to say that panther head, absolutely love. Yeah. So. That's how I realized that that wasn't how I realized it was behind you. So I saw the Pit Panther head. This was Thursday night, back to Thursday night. Right. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's just a car with the Pit Panther. Not clicking. Mark has a Jeep. I've seen the Jeep. I know what the Jeep looks like. It wasn't until I saw the Can Crusher side logo. I'm like, oh, shit, that's Mark. And then I got right behind you. And then that's when we started noticing each other. But I was not clicking at all cylinders at that point. (laughs) Brain free. <laughs> Brain free. Literally, you had to sit there with the tongue to the roof of your mouth trying to warm up. Licking a window. Uh, doesn't get yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, everything else all right, though? I mean, in, in two days? You know, uh, for the most part, we had a little bit of a incident with the pups. Too much playing. Not enough uh, control around it, if you will. So, you know, the puppies are... They're, they're doing their best right now. Uh, so we're looking for options to get the puppies back uh, in a more manageable fashion. We'll say it that way. Okay. But uh, everybody's good. Everybody's fine. Uh, so, yeah, nothing nothing to complain about. How about you? How have you been for two days? Uh, well, I guess, you know, essentially <laughs> work, working, forgetting that I went to SmackDown last week. And that really, like, that's stuck in my mind now that I'm like, what did I do last Friday? Uh, watching drafts and yeah. just catching up, doing nothing because as recording, it is real day that this is going to be released. Head into Pittsburgh to cross something off my bucket list. That hey, this is pretty cool. This is this is pretty cool. Yeah, I know what it is. I'm hoping it's amazing time. Hopefully it's the coolest thing you've ever done, and hopefully nothing dampers your parade about it, if you will. I know. I'm looking at the forecast, and listen, if everybody doesn't know, I'm calling two local high schools, baseball game at PNC Park. Uh, I got to go in and get a media pass, get, you know, fingerprinted. I don't know what I'm going to do. <clears throat> but the game's at 6. Uh, it will be on, if you're in and around our area, hell, we do have an app. Look up WKBI 93.9. It, it's a Dubois Central and Clarion game that uh, is going to be on a radio, and I'm trying to be nice about the voice, so you won't hear me yell probably that much today. Because, hey, you know, I'll be broadcasting, and the Pirates are probably going to say, hey, do you just want to stay here? And just start broadcasting the rest of the year for us. I'm thinking that's probably yeah. going to happen. That's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, there's nothing delusional about that whatsoever. I think that's <laughs> a very plausible situation. 
Let's take a step back here. This is almost a, a live episode of Can Crusher's wrestling podcast for view- listeners, because as soon as this is recorded, it's getting posted. Right. I'm so, thinking too, yeah. Yeah, you're gone, and Mark's gone. So, yeah, we're doing the most live episode you've ever seen. So, <laughs> it's coming yeah, up here. Really, even prior <laughs> years and everything, it really is the livest that you're going to get, so... Yeah, so I'm excited about that, and then we'll we'll see what uh, rocks and rolls the rest of the week. Yeah, well, well, that we will. Rock and rolls, huh? So it probably will be a little shorter uh, episode, so that's a good thing. I I do want to tell you, uh, you guys know I also have a journey coming along with just my craziness of life. I've now become a regional director for a league of some sort for for baseball that I, I've stepped into as well, <laughs> with unknowingly stepping into it, which is actually something cool. Uh, as I stepped back and looked on a, on a bucket list, I don't know where it was, but, yeah, uh, I'm in charge of six teams in the American Legion now in a section. That's, that's amazing. Look at you be- getting promoted. Possibly leading into something else in a couple of years down the line. He blatantly told me I'm being groomed for something. And I'm like, is being groomed for something, sometimes I think of that as dirty. I, I don't know. Is that the right word? Like, yeah, being well, groomed in wrestling sometimes is like, oh, oh, you're being groomed in wrestling. It depends on the connotation, connotation because there's people that have made that. It's very much associated with dirty activities, obviously. Right. But – I think for the other flip side of that, it's it can be good too because you're supposedly they're a parent, but it's going to depend on. Oh, I like that wow. even better. You yeah. be heir apparent, but you got to make sure you get to that point. I think a lot of people forget about that. Is when you're the heir apparent, they kind of be like, "Oh, I made it. I'm done." Sometimes that's not the case, though. You have to kind of keep grinding a little bit to keep it going. But with you. You got this in the bag, so I yeah, can't wait to see what you do with this. Close to home. So, yeah. Not like yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You got this. You can handle this. So excited about that, yada, yada, yada. But, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So let's jump into hot topics. I have a couple. Okay. Okay. I, I do. Yeah. First and foremost, um, Vince and Nick Khan – have sold everything that they have. Completely, I mean, they've been, both of them been completely out, but now they had no ties whatsoever. Yeah, the Nick Khan piece was kind of surprising to me because he was still around. He was at WrestleMania. Yeah. And, like, he was still there, so I thought he was still a part of the company unless something's going to come out that says he needs to be gone, essentially. Vince- or... The writing was on. I mean, this well, Vince was, was, this he was a, taking his money in chunks. Essentially, because, well, it's his retirement plan. So he sold off a bunch of it, lived for a couple months, and sold off a bunch of it more, lived for a couple months. I don't know how extravagant his lifestyle is, but. Yeah, clearly $760 million this last go round. Uh, yeah, I know. It, he. I'm glad it's finally over. This is officially he's out of the company type thing. He's just been selling off as – because I don't think I see anything else coming out that's going to be more detrimental to WWE, the brand. Could be totally wrong, and this could change in two hours, but – That usually happens when we say something like that. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Right. So the Nick Nick Khan thing just – intrigues me as to why he did unless he's stepping away from the company because he feels like it's in a good place that he doesn't need to be there anymore. Right. What yep. he's doing in the cons down in Jacksonville. Who knows? More on that later. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, on the tales of Vince and Nick selling everything, there is pseudo rumors then Vince may open another one starting next year. No possible way. I don't think so. 
if he does, I don't know. I don't think he could. I, I don't think, think people he's would want. going to be in court and stuff for a while. He's, I would agree. I maybe that's why it's next year is because he's going to be in court this year about it. But to that point, nobody's going to watch that. He is that delusional. Well, people will watch it initially because it's like AEW. You watch it to initially. AEW produced some great things after that. So there was things that could keep people around. But he's delusional if he thinks the brand of product that he brought forth is what people want to see. Right. Because his product, the last 10 years of his tenure, really, eh, I, that's too much. I would say Five years of his tenure, seven, yeah, was too, was not conducive to the fans. Yeah. Did not make quality product at that point. I think COVID helped him because he didn't have to do it in front of live crowds and could produce something else with the monitor, with the Thunderdome and everything like that and produce things a certain way. But really, he has, can't be, he's not carrying it forward. It, it just, to me, I don't think it's going to be as appealing. People are going to watch because there's going to be super big name stars that go, if their contracts are ready, that are going to go to this new right federation, whatever it is. With that being said, essentially, and these allegations and everything that's on the docket, paperwork has to kind of start being in place mid-year if you want to kick off in like January or something like that yeah. roundabout. I don't know if those allegations will be wrapped up, but those allegations will live on forever no matter what goes mm-hmm. on with it because there's been people who wants to make that jump? You know, uh, I'm going to throw out a name and it's being thrown out because her contract is, you know, close to being done. Does a Becky Lynch does any woman want to be the first one to sign there? Just having that in the back of your mind? No. Becky, no. Because, I well, said Becky just because we always bring up her contract. No, no, that's fair. We always do bring up her contract. But to your point, no woman would sign there right off the bat. The only woman, maybe, maybe sign someone like a Tessa Blanchard that just happens to be in a big... Maybe he's just starting a controversial wrestling federation, the CWF, and just, like, pull them all in, see what happens. I mean, that could be – but I don't really see any woman being like, I want to be aligned with him. Right. I wouldn't be anywhere near him, you know, and that's going to be a lot to overcome. There's going to be some people that will take the jump, but Dude, I don't know. there. I believe money, the money will still be there. The money could be there. That's accurate. But the question is, how does it, how are they going about this? Right. Where do we get to the end game with it? And uh, I don't know. It just seems so far-fetched based on where he's at right now that it would be wild if he started something new. Plus, I'm, I'm thick. Yeah, he's old. Mm-hmm. If he's maybe just the money backer and he does sit to play the other end of Devil's Advocate, if he just sits and him and Nick are going to do it and it's him passing something to Nick in two years, essentially, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give you that. Because Nick's like, dude, just give me some money for – not that Nick's going to be broke after he's sold all his shares, but – Hey, give me a little bit of money to get this going. Get me because your notoriety with all the ta- the cable companies, yada yada yada, to get you us in on the door of somewhere. Yep. Maybe, but full fledged on TV, strutting out and everything like that. No, I, I can't imagine. This is this is just warriors yeah. starting shit behind the scenes and yada yada yada. Yeah. I will say this. If he brings in Kevin Dunn, nobody's watching the product. Oh. For sure. Touche. We're, we're, we've recovered. My favorite videos now are the cuts, people making 
making different cuts showing like, oh, if Kevin Dunn shot this, it would be like this and this and this. The whole Jay Uso going out to the parking lot thing was hilarious in that regard. But and I have one more, and I'm sure these are this is on your on your list. Well, two, but we'll talk about one when we write talk about it, Dynasty. <clears throat> WWE doing some releases here. Mm, yeah, that was a uh, couple caught me off guard. Yeah, Cameron Grimes caught me off guard. The, the under the radar one of Bond of Wagner, who I thought they were very high on at one Uber point in time. Yeah, that was a little surprising in that. Um, if you want to run through the list, go I was, was going to say Jinder, Zaylee, both members of Indusheer, uh, yeah. Zion Quinn. Von Wagner and Cameron Grimes. Cameron was the one that caught me off guard the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vaughn, I don't want to say prodigy because that, there's a connotation to prodigy of like the next, but he was big. He, he, he had a big name. They really pushed him. Zion Quinn, okay. In this year, the tag team in this year, whatever, you know, they've been up and down. Yeah. Jinder does a lot, did a lot for WWE. That one kind of caught me, too. And he's pissed about it. Yeah, he's not happy. He's going everywhere. Yeah. And Zia Lee, listen, I think she just, I love her. I, I, I yeah. love what she can do in the ring. I liked her more in NXT when she got brought up to the roster, and she's, I don't know, pseudo- Ninja, Kabuki Warrior, Slash, they just booked her horribly. I, I yeah. just, I, once she got to the main roster, she just had no backing or no idea what they were going to do with her. Probably mm-hmm. should have sent her back down and she would have had another great following in NXT. Yeah. I see a couple of them getting contracts in 89 days, let alone 90, essentially. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, Xylee's going to be the first one taken off the board. I, I think Xylee's got a lot more potential. She's going to get something, whether that's going back across seas or in the in, in somewhere else in the U.S., she's going to get something picked up real quick. Um, Vaughn, I don't know if he's going to get anything. I think he was bred for WWE yeah. success, and that's that's the unfortunate part of that, at least for him. Um Gender getting hindered again. Again. Interesting. And, you know, you heard the reports that, uh, well, that was close. Um, what was that? Lightning. That was oh. lightning. Yeah. Boy, that, that's going to, that only <laughs> trickles down to Pittsburgh. So. Yeah. That was fun. Um, <laughs> so. Jinder and Zia Lee were actually well-respected backstage. People loved them. People loved being around them and that. So it, it's kind of hard to see that. But, again, this is – I think it's more about, listen, if we're not – if we don't have anything for you and we don't think you're going to be beneficial on NXT, they start trimming, trimming the fat away and start moving things pieces around. I mean, Jinder and Indusheer – there was only so much they were willing to do with them. They were only really willing to stick them in that pseudo foreigner tag team role. And that's a tough peg to be stuck into. Ginger did great things with The Rock just four months ago in nope. one segment. So that release to me was one of the more shocking ones as well. But I think there's going to be a opportunity for some of these people to get something. Maybe Ginger's Vince McMahon's first pick in that new federation. Who knows? Because, uh, to be honest, I don't know. Ginger's going to be a guy that's going to travel the Indies. I, think I don't think so. he's settling anywhere else. No, I don't either. Zaya, I think, could slide right into TNA and make an impact. Yep. That was no pun. That just actually waited. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, I want to talk about some down the line of an AEW. She could go to AEW as well, but I think she gets lost in the shuffle at AEW right now with the returns and the recents and this, that, and the other. 
AEW has so much going on for it right now that it, for the women's division, that once it's actually set, it'll be fine. And that's, so there's just no way they could, the way they book and showcase the women on AEW does not lead to, let's add another lady that wasn't as high profile as some of these other signings and people that are coming in. So I could see them just not looking at even her way. Unless it's a Megalodon signing, you know, essentially, I think AEW in general needs to stop for a while. Mm -hmm. But he said he wouldn't stop. I know he won't. I know he won't stop. He'll never stop. No, he won't. And that's, I think that's the problem with what you saw with Andrade and a lot of people that were there was they didn't stop. They he, he just keeps bringing people in, so there's not enough room to establish your pillars, book this talent that has big names and that. Andrade could have been the world champion there if there was an opportunity and there wasn't so many people ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my final thing is no recent news on NCAA football. Everything's just, this is what we've learned. This is what we've learned. This is, and I'm not talking about like college football itself. We're talking about the video game as we always do. Um, nothing. Everything's been hushed for the last couple of weeks because I think the beginning of May, well, second week of May, we're getting something. We're getting everything we want. You, well, you do understand why it was hushed. They had to basically stop everything to potentially add the greatest division one signing that they've ever had. He took this and it, and fucking ran with it. So I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess everybody in our listening audience did not hear about this, but it's everywhere in here. There's billboards. Sure. There's everything. Sure everybody in Toronto or Collins block. <laughs> The second place that's right. always, and I always apologize. The person in Iowa or in the <laughs> or Idaho, those people. Bluff. Yeah, council bluff. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> my alma mater for college, Mercyhurst University, got added to uh, Division One in all sports in the NEAC conference, which is apparently called the United East Conference now, which I don't know why it's still called NEAC, but whatever. Um or I guess it was formerly known as Northeastern Atlanta Athletic Conference. But, yeah, they got added for Division One across the board. Basically, it's PA, Jersey, New York, maybe Delaware, thrown in there for good measure. But uh, Mercer's University, if you haven't heard from it, it's a very small school up here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Smaller than it's, my school. It has a, <laughs> it, yeah, right. It has a great Division One hockey team. That's been to the Frozen Four several times. We've actually hosted a Frozen Four. Numerous, yeah. Yeah, and so it got added. They added everything up for it. Uh, They're going to play Division I football at some point. I think it's this year as far as I know, and which will be interesting. I think it will be very interesting to see how that plays out. So tell me you have the NEAC and the teams pulled up right in front of you. Yeah. The Sky yeah. Division in the Volt Division? This can't be right. What? There's some... Oh. Who you couldn't even begin. Who you couldn't even begin. Oh, I couldn't. Um, one person besides Mercy. See, this is, this is not the right division. Hold on here. Oh, Northeast Conference. This has to be. Give me a minute. My researching skills are not as good at... Uh, not in the morning. By the way, guys, I'll tell you, we'll cross this one off the list then. I am sitting right here. This is probably going to be my first of a couple, but I'm doing my W right now. So, guys, if you want an energy drink that is awesome, there's there's no calories, there's no carbonation, there's no crash, uh, check out W because there's a ton of flavors out there. I love Beach and Peach. There's dragon fruit, there's callow cream, there's everything you need, and it keeps me going from 4 a.m. to 11, which is essentially going to change from probably 5 a.m. to midnight from now on, I guess. I don't know. Work is changing as well. But 
it, it's an amazing drink. It keeps you going all day long. You take two scoops, throw it in your shaker, shake the shit out of it, drink it, and you just you, you'll hear me probably throughout the podcast because I'm nipping on it right now. Get a little bit more excited. It's awesome. Uh, check it out and then use our promo code Can Crushers to save ten percent. There is a sample pack out there. They give you a couple flavors. They give you a shaker. It's only about twenty bucks. You'll get ten percent off that as well. So check out W for any of your energy needs and get rid of the cans and the carbonation because it ain't no good for you. Ain't no good for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God there's not real reads. I'm like, hey, there's real reads today. If you uh, so I have – I wonder why that one's red. All right. So this is – it's actually stems – can go as far as Illinois all the way over to Connecticut and that. So it's a pretty big conference. There's different lists here. Full members right now. The current full members are Central Connecticut State, uh, Harley Dickinson, who's made oh, the tournament. Know that. Yeah. Lemoyne College, Long Island University. I only know these from basketball, by the way. Yes. They, so yes. That's that. exactly it. Yeah. Merrimack College, Sacred Heart University, St. Francis University, Stonehill College. St. Francis is going to be the rival of that. Boom. Yeah, probably. It's, it's uh, the A team. Yep. And then Wagner College is their active full roster. I mean, Mercer's is the future member, so. Uh, oh, and Chicago State University is also going to be their future member. So we're fall of 2024. But okay. do you want to get, do you want to guess? No, I can't. I'm not going to guess anything because I don't know any. I, I, I've heard I, them from basketball, and I know, I've actually been to St. Francis. Well, no, no, no. What do you think the largest enrollment is of the schools? See, number that, wise, ballpark number, and it's under twenty thousand. Well, I was going to. My tops was going to be fifteen. Honestly. A little bit more. A little more. Long Island had sixteen thousand nine hundred. I was close enough. Mercier's coming in at twenty seven hundred. <laughs> but not the smallest. They are not the smallest. Uh, that goes to Wagner College, seventeen hundred, which is officially smaller than one of my high schools. Yeah, not mine. Not really mine. That was a joke about Ridgeway, but wow. Yeah. So it's gonna be. Yeah. So let me stir the pot. I'm just stirring the pot clearly all day. Uh, when football comes out and they're on, and we get our dynasty and everything going. You have to be them then, right? Oh, yeah. I'm whooping that trick of Alabama for sure with Mercer's Game University. Game one, NCAA. Game you one. Do, you do your schedule. Yeah. Mercy first against Alabama. Alabama, check. Pitt, check. <laughs> no, no, no. You're playing me as Pitt. I have to. Well, you're right. But listen, that's the rivalry game there. It's a two-hour drive. We're you right know, at each other. Our game is St. Francis. They have to be on. No, nope, but it's going to be pit. I'm going to make a pit and get crowns every year for 20 years until I pull the immaculate upset. <laughs> <sighs> I I don't know how some of these other football teams are, and they're going to stay very much in their division. They'll they'll get hey you know come to pit. We'll give you three million dollars to come to pit. Yada yada yada. Go to. Hawaii for a game so they can get money. And that's what these little schools, because they are going to be, they're an FCS team. Yeah. That's what they're going to do. I don't, you know, once they get in league though, I bet you they're going to be decent. I mean, how, how is their football team overall like right now in their division three? I would say it's not. Not anything worth writing home about because we don't talk about it. If there's talk yeah. about Mercyhurst, it's about their hockey team. It's not about the football team or really any sport, to be honest. I mean, there's a reason this news came out when its rival school in Erie Gannon went to the lead eight in Division Two. So there's a reason this news came out that same week, basically, because that's what they had to go off of. It's crazy. For, from where they were to jumping right into Division One. do you think Smiths is going to do something with some NIL deals with anybody there? <laughs> I mean, the NIL deal nah. is not going to be 
crazy to get to go to Martin mm-hmm. Harris. Now listen, when they are <laughs> this overall overall two and nine on the season last year and one and six in conference, <laughs> there's not a lot of that night. There's not a lot of five there's not a lot of one star recruits that are going there. A lot of walk ons, eh? Mm hmm. A lot of walk ons. A lot of bees and use. But hey, you now officially caught up to me. You do, you graduated from a Division One school, so congratulations. I did. Yep. It's it's uh, feels great. It's an honor. You know, I can finally tap life, that. Doesn't it? Division One. I'm going to change update the resume to say Division One, uh, Mercyhurst University. So that's your lead that's now. Fun. Not your yeah. not your what you've done in life. That's my lead. I'm going to leave. That's the only thing I have. (laughs) Do you have anything else before we jump Uh, into The one thing I will say before we jump into the things is I just read somewhere that – oh, no, never mind. This is from Grayson Waller trying to stir some shit up. Uh, Never mind. But what I will say is Tony Khan, props to selling a neck injury. Appreciate you. And – but you get, don't turn your head. Come on. <laughs> he tried. We're going to go, we're referencing, when we talk about Dynamite, you know, yeah. you already know what we're you talking about, but, but he popped up on the NFL draft and man, <laughs> he didn't tell it at all. <laughs> at least turn. Your In your chair. Body. Yeah, right. Turn the chair in the whole body, not just move your neck around and all that. When the guy, when the schmucks on the Pat McAfee show are making fun of you for not selling it properly, but because it was to him, he got on NFL Network night two as well because of what he did at night one. He also so, called on the NFL Network. He called the WWE the Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein wrestling. wrestling. Yeah. Oh, that's rough. I mean, that there's is, shots, but then there's like mm. low blow shots. Yeah. And that was that was a low blow shot. Yeah. It really was. He's off his rocker right now. I don't know. Good thing Dad came Wednesday night. I mean, mm-hmm. great well, time. Dad, Dad sold that. <laughs> dad is a meme forever. By the way, now too. All right, let's do our due diligence so we can talk about Dynasty. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Collar and Elbow hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and the Hooligans have down there. Make sure you check it out. They have some awesome shirts. That I live by, you know, the dusty shirt, the Macho Man inspired shirt, there's Shad, there's Animal, people that have passed, they're amazing. Check out their quality, it's awesome. And just buy it all. And we have a promo code, right? Yeah, I think it's like Can Crushers. And I think you can save 10% off. So yeah, enter Can Crushers, save 10% off at Collar and Elbow. Or, you know, if you want to do that and then go to WWE for shopping, we have a link up in our show notes that takes you to our affiliate link. Not saying there's discounts involved or anything like that, but it does help out the show if you click that link and do your shopping for night one of the draft. If your favorite superstar got drafted to your favorite show, you know, buy the merch. Buy the merch. Don't forget we have merch well at CrowdMade, and all you have to do is go to CrowdMade, type in Can Crushers, you'll see the hoodies, the t-shirts, the sweet tank top that we have on there, a couple different colors uh, across the board, so go and buy them to help rep whatever indie show or main show or the NFL Draft, wherever you're at, just represent Can Crushers. <laughs> I'm very set. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> you can listen to us. Pretty much anywhere, right? Yeah, like Spotify, Apple, wherever you want to go. You could also listen to us on Podrama. They have some great deals and discounts. If you go to their site now, see what you can sign up for. Uh, but, yeah, listen to us on Podrama. Get the uh, best wrestling podcasters out there in your ear holes. And it seamlessly transitions from device to device. Yeah, they do have a lot of cool – I actually – I use it. But I actually went to their website to kind of see if they change. They have like three or four promotions up there right now, short-term, long-term, and forever-term, essentially. So check out the one that works for you if you're trying it or if you actually love it. And you notice something, Jenks? I know that we're on YouTube now, just audio version. So if you go to our page, like, subscribe, share, put hit the bell, all those cool things that you get for your YouTube notifications – 
but our YouTube algorithm um, has changed a little bit, and it's no no uh, shot on us or anything. The YouTube one now is coming out like a couple days after. I don't know if it's something mm. from our hosting site that said, holy shit, we have a lot of people doing this or whatever. So yeah. if you're on YouTube, uh, you get whatever episode, have it be a spotlight or our weekly, our weekly wrap-up or whatever. It comes out a couple days after. So just to let you know, it's not all alive, essentially, anymore. But mm-hmm. I've been watching that. But that continues to grow for us. So if you are a YouTube listener, thank you. And uh, do all the cool things. Pass it around. Do whatever you want. But just know that it's not usually out anymore the day that it comes out. Yeah. But we still love you for listening when you listen. Yeah. Exactly. So that's awesome. Um and we'd love you to participate if you want to participate. Uh we have an email, cancrusher sixty nine at gmail dot com. Send your questions, comments, uh concerns, area grievances. It's not best of us, but we'll take them anyways. Um or you can call us. Give us a ring ding ding, uh, 814-299-6687 and let us know what you think. Three minutes in length, maybe not 95 calls in a row, like a serial killer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so. Moochie's not a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, Moochie, well, he's at least a stalker. He's ended up in front of me. Listen, he's ended, he's ended up in front of me in traffic twice after not, I've never seen him on the road in about eight years. And now he's been in front of me twice in traffic for the past two, in the last two weeks. And so now every time I see him, I flip him off. It's the way to go. Baffle. I mean, it's baffling for him, but get get out of my lane. I'm coming so, through. Yeah, get out of my lane. <laughs> truck's coming. <laughs> First time. Like a truck coming through. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back, and we're going to – Recap Dynasty, essentially, which uh, was AEW's last pay-per-view, and then uh, segment three, we'll do kind of a real quick wraparound of some things that we want to talk about in professional wrestling, and then move into what we suspect might happen uh, with the draft, I think, right? Yes, agreed. Okay, quick break, we'll be back. Hey, this is the Barbie Killer, Haley Shadows. I absolutely hate Can Crushers, but I'm going to be on it, so stay tuned. And welcome back, Can Crushers fans. Thanks for listening. We love you. This, that, and the other thing. It's Mark. It's Mike. And we're here. We are going to break down AEW Dynasty. Jenks, before we get into the meat and potatoes of it, because this was just was good. What did you mm. think about it? Good, excellent, great, you know, fantastic pay-per-view of the year. Maybe run away right now because this had so much going for it. So much happening. So many good things. Match of the year probably is on here. That was so good. It almost became a spectacle versus, you know, a lot of things go. Yeah, a lot of things going on. I was thrilled with this pay-per-view. A couple weeks ago or a month ago when it was essentially announced that it was going to be a pay-per-view, we're like, oh, no, AEW is getting into the scheme of once a month. Is this going to be a throwaway one? Until a week later when we saw, and let's just call a spade a spade. Oh, man, they're going to take over the show here in about 30 seconds because somebody is right against the microphone staring out the window, Max. But that's okay. <laughs> um when we got Danielson and Osprey announced, we knew something was going to be it. Was this going to be the yeah. main event? Was there going to be no titles on the line? But they pulled it together, and you're right. I personally think, as of right now, this is pay-per-view of the year for me. Because because of the later stuff. Some of the yeah. early stuff was tough, tough trudging. Is that the right way? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get all my bad shit out early. So tonight I'm fucking Johnny on the spot. But um, some of the stuff was, mm, but then it, it just, it did a wrestling show. It, it continued to climb that ladder. You're like, when you got done watching it on Sunday, though, thank God I only worked in the afternoon. 
I think it just needs to be all wrestling pay-per-views need to be on Saturdays anymore. As a kid, it was different, right? You Maybe yeah. the parents would let you skip school. The idea. I can't take off two days a month, essentially, for wrestling yeah. shows. Right? right? You have to go in on a Monday dragging ass. Well, just that's exactly it. Damn it. Switch it to Saturday, yeah. PEW. I wish they would. See, this is the problem with having collisions Saturday nights at 8, is you run into this problem. What they should be doing so that they can switch it to a Saturday night pay-per-view is put collision on at 6, make it like a Sunday night heat type episode where it runs, that's your pre-show, and it runs right into your pay-per-view. I mean, that's the... What you need to do, if you're, you're worried about meeting contractual deadlines with TV shows, with TV networks, make Collision a 6 o'clock show, run it into 8, 8 kicks off the main card, gets people over the pay-per-view. That's your zero hour. Yep. If you want to have it. matches from 6 to 7, even 7.30, and then make – because you can talk that whole time about matches from 6 to 7.30 – and then on TBS or TNT, wherever it is that week, make 7.30 to 8 your zero hour, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. boom. I, I think that it meets, works. It meets your contract deadlines. It does everything you need to do. But, again, it also then extends people in getting in the building and all of that stuff, too. So you play the line. You toe the line. But I agree with you. Wrestling pay-per-views need to be on Saturday. Most of your fans are Got nine to fives, and yeah. they're going to be or four to elevens, five right. to ones. Whatever you yeah. know what I mean. So you have to you have to be cognizant right. of that too, and try to get the accommodate the fans as much as possible. Yeah. So, and I know it's probably not good. I was actually in my brain all week. I'm like, why can't Collision be on Sundays? Well, yeah. because for what maybe twenty weeks a year. We didn't touch on this in the opening segment. Mm. Maybe 20 weeks a year, the Sunday night football. But if collisions on, on a Sunday, I wouldn't hate that either. True. Then you could watch the 20 both, weeks I guess. a year is a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. Well, it's a big to-do. And I, to that point, that's probably, Yeah. No, you're right on that. I was going to make another point, but that doesn't make any sense. So, but the 20 weeks a year, you're actually right. You're losing to Sunday night football. Was guaranteed. That? Because that's the struggle they're running into on Monday nights with Raw is as soon as football comes on, you, you've lost. Cut in half. Yeah. You're, you're definitely cut in half. By the way, yep. NFL is proposing to make it an 18 week season, 18 game season with both teams getting Two buys, essentially, hmm. getting it only to two preseason games, which I'm all right with that. I, I really yeah. am. But then the whole year is 20 weeks, pushes back the Super Bowl to, I was going to say Father's Day. Definitely not Father's Day. The fuck, that's in June. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they have off from January until June to play the Super Bowl. Yeah. But, uh, they want to have it over President's Day weekend, so because most people, except borough employees and a lot of other people, and me, in you, and your and, yeah. yeah, and your insurance people, I, I don't know if a lot of people get President's Day off, so I don't know the push is going to be good. The push of that, I'm all right for it for the NFL, but it yeah. really isn't a holiday that people get off work. Kids get off school, yeah. but yeah. It's technically supposed to be a federal holiday, so your federal employees get off, but nobody else is getting off. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, uh, we don't. We, we can close, keep talking about it. but federal no. enough, but we're not, yeah. and we still don't get off. It, it's yeah. not even – I try to bring it up in our contract talks, and it just doesn't happen. I've also tried to get Cinco de Mayo off so we can cover my aspect being Martinez, and they really laughed at me about that. So I said, how about St. Patrick's Day? Because maybe it's a broader, and they're like, you're really going fucking down the wrong path. <laughs> and that's what when you say, I think I'm going down the appropriate path here. Right. <laughs> I think we should have a paid day off monthly, but they just don't agree with that either. 
a lot of contract coming up this year. So, all right, AEW Dynasty <laughs> is, is on the docket to talk about, though. How much of Zero Hour did you watch? Uh, I watched oh. a little bit of it. I got – I definitely watched the Acclaimed versus Bullet Club Gold. Again, you texted me, and, like, Sunday night, I'm like, I thought it started at 7. So I obviously did not catch it until, like, after 7, but I saw – the trios championship match, winner take all. It was like I said. I only I, I I don't know if they're changing this, and it can't crush your fans. Honestly, tell me. I don't know if they're changing this zero hour on Saturday night to let us know that it's starting at six thirty or when. Yeah. But boom, I. I it was on. I, I turned it on, but I was really – I was doing some stuff. I didn't really watch Trent and Seidel, but I still don't understand why Trent and Seidel were going at it when Trent just beat the shit out of Orange Cast. Shouldn't it have been an Orange match? I would have thought, but apparently they're dragging this out. So, And they just wanted the shot of them looking at each other passing in the – Passing the ships sailing, ships passing in the wind, waves or something, whatever that expression is. Right. Uh, you would think, you would think they would want that match. Like that's your kickoff, but apparently they don't want to blow that off until double or nothing. I think is where they're because oh, clearly, but, but they're but they're quick to rush a parking lot brawl with Chuck and Trent. Right. Which. That doesn't make any sense to me either. Yes, Chuck's not cleared yet, but he can fight in a parking lot. A parking lot, yeah. Right. Uh, Trent I went back. Trent does get the win. Then we get Orange and Shibata against Taylor Enterprises, and this wasn't really even a match, I don't think. No, no. That's what I – the highlights I've seen, yeah. Yeah. The claimed against Bullet Club, winner gets all titles. Let's start here. Max Caster has been off his game for almost a year. Yeah. Until tonight. <laughs> Holy fucking mic drop. He went for it. He fucking went for it. He, he's been off since they became face because he's had to curtail it a little bit. But, man, he fucking went for Jay White in this whole thing. And, again, this was on the pre-show. Yeah. So, again, it's open to public to watch on YouTube, this, this, that, and the other thing. Sucking balls and sucking dick and taking it here and taking it. I'm like, this is usually not Max recently. No. Max is pushing the envelope again. And I, I'm wondering when this – are we getting the acclaimed heel turn or are we getting Max Caster turning? Either or. Yeah. I almost just, think it's time for the acclaim to go bye bye. I think so too. I think they've grown outgrown the tag team world. They could still stride. be a faction maybe <clears throat> but have that if we need to be together, we can be together, but let's kind of see what we can do on our I, I think Bones is gonna get I lost think, in the shuffle. I think Bones is gonna get lost in the shuffle, but I think they split because I think Caster's going to become the main player out of the two. Caster is got the talking ability. I mean, Bones has got some charisma to him in that whatsoever, but Bo Caster's doing the raps. He's doing the wrestling. He's doing he can do a lot of things. Bones is kinda like, okay, I'm there, I can be loud, I can be boisterous, but there's nothing really behind that chip per se. So I think it's gonna be interesting to see how they kind of split that up and Breakdown. Sean Marty. What? We're gonna get a Sean Marty experience between uh, the two. Maybe. Wouldn't that be something? And they never talk the rest of their lives again. Lives. Yeah. And, and to that point, that could be happening now. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like they're just done with what they're wanting, what they want out of this wrestling. In that, they want to move on. Yeah. I'm not to be – listen, I hated them. I love them. And now they're just getting old. So a little bit of a spin. But this was the right thing, I think, to get the titles off of them. And I hope they are truly unified 
that yeah. when we we've, we've been saying since both six man championships were around, two companies ROH being are and I'm not knocking it being smaller than what AEW is. I don't think you needed to because mm-hmm. you were wrapping up essentially six people in makeshifting teams to yeah. get into this six man title across the board. One across, good. Get new titles though, Tony. I, mm-hmm. I don't want them. To, I don't want them carrying around two titles apiece. If it's unified, do whatever. So I imagine that happens soon. If it didn't on ROH already. Yeah. Well, my thought is it just becomes the AEW banner. You can take them more to where you sure you need them, but yeah, I. Never understood the need or want for the two titles. I think it was just something that they threw together and said, hey, we can get – people like the six-man titles, so let's put them both in there. But those titles have been cursed since they first – were the first inception of them. They really have. They really have. This just turns out to be a goddamn brawl, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. There was anybody do it. Anybody yeah, do whatever no they want. There was no rules in this match. No, I mean, God, I didn't no. know it was a no-DQ match. <laughs> but I, I think it's right because both teams, <coughs> both teams have kind of fallen off a little bit even before they started this rivalry and they were friends for a while. I think the Bang Bang Gang needs them a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Since Jay and MJF, man, Jay has fallen. The guns have fallen. Mm-hmm. Max is only the real winner out of this, maybe excelling himself a little bit just because of his mic skills. Well, that's exactly it. But that also proves that <laughs> mic skills get you a lot farther in the game than anything else. Yeah. Then we get to the main show, essentially. And it's the Continental Classic Championship. They change this every week. It's the Continental Classic Championship. It's just the Continental Championship. And I know that it's only moving a word, but Whatever, whatever. Let's fucking go right off yeah. the bat, though, between Okada and Pac. <sighs> I miss Pac when we don't get him. Yeah. Because I he's... forget about him when he's not there, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, because he's something – he's one of those players where you know he's a reliable hand. You love him when you see him. But when you don't see him – what he does is memorable in the ring, but you don't get anything outside of him. So you're not missing him like we like long for our MJF to come back. Right. Pac is one of those guys where you see him, it's all go, it's great, it's fantastic, he can carry his own. But he's not doesn't do anything memorable with the mic or anything to kind of estab- reestablish a legacy. And it could be because he's gone too often. Yeah. He's just gone too often, we can't. We're just like, oh, my God, he's back. And then we're like, well, he's gone again. So thanks for coming. But yeah. this was, you know, say was in the top five <clears throat> for about two hours. This this was a great match. This was yeah. fucking awesome. Now, I'll ask you, Okada retains, and we'll get to, you know, some of the moves and everything if you want to talk about them. Did we get a double turn in this match, now I, let me pause you. Okay. I know you're ready. Okada has aligned himself with the elite. Okay, we understand that, but everybody was on Okada. Okada was a face being with elite, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he essentially told the crowd to fuck off in the middle of the match, right? And Pac's always been a bastard. Nobody is liked with my air quotes. Pac, he's always been a bastard. He's been a heel. I think mid-match, it just switched it. Nobody gives a shit that Okada's here. I don't mean like that, because for his wrestling and everything, nobody gives a shit that Okada's here and aligned with the elite. They want the title on Pac all of a sudden. Boom! Like it, It happened naturally, great, and awesomely. Yeah, I want Pac to beat Okada now. I want Pac to yeah. beat Okada Saturday, Sunday night. I was all on – because Okada doesn't need this title first and foremost. But I think this was great because of that. The match was amazing. The story within the match was awesome as well. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree. I think 
to your point, it's when you betray the fans with the Rainmaker pose, get ready to do it, and then all of a sudden you flip them off. Lights out. They were they instantly turned on Okada, whether it was made to or not, or they thought they were going to get that kind of reaction from them. I have no idea, but it was quick as a hiccup. And then they were celebrating Pac after the match when he was done, when it was trying to roll out of the ring. It's one of those things where they may not have intentionally meant to do it, but maybe Ow. Okada, it happened. Maybe the company didn't intentionally mean to do it, but maybe Okada recognized I got to get do something to make them hate me instead of cheer me. And that might speak to the level of professional he is because he noticed that and he's like, okay, what can I do that will get instant hate that spot? It worked. It worked tremendously. People are going to respect his work, but it, they know now that they hate him for what he, his actions he's taking. Yeah, he's got his flowers from since he joined AEW full time. Everybody's like, oh, God, is here. Oh, God, is here. Everybody was so excited. And I think he was riding that for a while. Yeah. Even winning the Continental Classic from Eddie, everybody was still pumped. They were still just on that high of him being here and da 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 da. They had it. They had to do something, and it was. I, I think it was Chef's perfect. Kiss. I think so much more to come from Okada, and we knew that. Yeah, but I think the real winner of this match, on, on paper, not W's and L's, right. was Pac. Oh, 100 percent. Pac got a marquee match kicking off the show and he made it. It was a million bucks. And it was one of those reminders of how good Pac truly is in the ring and how he can hold his own with even the best in the world, like an Okada. Can he extend his stay a little bit longer, though? That's all. I know. That's, that's the toughest thing is can we get more than three months here, three months there, three months here? You know what I mean? But that's, I think, maybe what he's makes it even more special. He really is. He is. He's a family man. He wants to be with his family. But I think that's what makes it even more special. It's when we get him, we get him. Yeah. So. No long-term feuds with him. Just quick, awesome matches. So, yeah. Remember when we said uh, there was a couple matches? <clears throat> no disregard to him. These next two matches for me were just, they were good. But they no weren't more great. good. Yeah. Yeah. Copeland, Briscoe, and Kingston against the House of Black. Fuck, I don't even know why they put a ring up for this match, essentially. Because <laughs> they were everywhere. The, yeah, it was. It, it just turned out to, again, it was not supposed to be a no DQ match or a Falls Count Anywhere match. Or, and it, the, the pin happened in the ring, but it just wasn't in the ring for more than three minutes at a time. And then, boom, yeah. everybody's going everywhere. Yeah. Well, and then they were introducing chairs to jump off of Briscoe, jumping off the apron on from a fucking chair, which was great. But it was, at the same time, it was also like, <laughs> fuck is this match? Is this, what Dude. am I supposed to be watching here? <laughs> yeah, it was Darby Allen-esque, essentially. It, it was. Am I supposed to be watching a car wreck or am I supposed to be watching a trios match? What do, you, what do I need to watch here? So I think they just went for brawl out and hope for the best. That's essentially what it's throw fist, and then let's get to the ending that we want, which is Malachi and um, Edge, Copeland, Copeland yeah. going back and forth, which I thought that was great that he got the pin over Copeland. Is that I, alluding to something, a double or nothing? I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping he gets the title off of him. Yeah. Because I think that would be obviously great for Malachi, but at the same time, it's like, okay, can we, does Edge finally get a really good match besides what he's done with Christian? And I know he's helped out a lot of people, but is this something to bring Edge even further out of his shell? Bring him more back and say, I'm back, I'm here, I'm going to fight. And does it help put Black over even further? That's going to be the key I'm trying to figure out with that is, will double or nothing, will this whole thing, set out Malachi up for something good or is it going to be more detrimental than anything? Are we hyping it up because of the chaos that ensued in this match? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a normal match when they meet a double or nothing, by the way. Oh, God. I, that's fair. That's this would be probably in the spectacle realm of can crushers. I can see that. 
Yeah, I could see that definitely. Because mm-hmm. there's so many components as well uh, of people. We haven't had a cage match in mm-hmm. how long in AEW? Long. Yeah. That could so, be a cage match. To keep the rest of them out and Briscoe and Kingston out, yada, yada, yada. I, I'm ready for it, though. And I think this is the perfect person for Copeland to drop it to. We, we've said it for months now. When he does get this title, it's not going to be a long reign. I'm actually shocked it's going to be a maybe two-and-a-half-month reign within itself. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think that sets it up for him. And I think it's the right person. I, I really do. You know how much we love House of Black on here. But I, I think it's the right person to take it off of Edge, Copeland, whatever we're calling him. Listen, we're throwing names out the window anymore. We don't care. You guys know what we're talking about. Um, I think it's the right person to elevate that TNT title going down the line. You're getting yeah. a name on it with Edge again after it's run a gamut of mm, – it has been – and I'm not saying anything Christian did anything wrong. But right. I still don't think that that feud is over. Essentially, no. I think once he comes back, shit stirs again. I I could say that wholeheartedly. I think with Copeland and that, you're right. It's more with the TNT title with Chris with Christian and Copeland. It's been more about getting the name recognition on the title to build the prestige versus actually building up the younger stars now. So we're resetting the clock with that one. I think Malachi comes in and takes over as the heir apparent here to kind of drive it forward even further. So, and to your point about Christian and Copeland, it's far from over, but it's always going to be far from over. Right. They're always going to be passing each other, and they're, it's going to be a continuation throughout their, both their times there. So does the Black Mist turn it again? Does the Black Mist do anything to Copeland? He took it full. He did. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping he develops black eyeliner around his eyes again, like everybody else like, seemingly gets the black mist. I think it would be cool to see him maybe turn more of a heel or more ruthless, if yeah. you will, in his attack, dastardly in his attacks coming forward. I think that's going to be the play here, but we'll have to see if they actually go down that route with him or have him shake off the effects. This could be win it at double or nothing for Black after another miss shot. Copeland's gone for a week off of TV, maybe two weeks, and then we find out he joins. Mm. I don't know. I'm just that's. What I think Copeland to be with somebody all of a sudden. I could see that. What an interesting turn if we get. Uh, House of Black, and maybe it's in the vein of what Edge was hoping for with Judgment Day. Yeah. Exactly where I was going. Yep. Exactly. We get the TBS title match, and listen, this was given away two weeks prior to who was winning it, yada, yada, yada. Man, I don't, the House Rules match was stat, and Sky was banned from ringside. I need more from a house rules match. You know, I need more from Willow picking that because she didn't give herself an advantage. You know, you, you want to give yourself an advantage with this house rules that you get to pick as the challenger. So you took sky out, but you also took Statlander out. So it it essentially was just a one-on-one match for the title. Without the 20 crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Which you do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, like I said, I, we both knew what was going to happen. If we were going to mm-hmm. do predictions, because we didn't do predictions last week, because we weren't here, yada, 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 we were both picking Willow anyway. Yeah, oh, sure. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Well, it, the bad part of this match, everything you said, but also the highlights of this match was not the women in the ring trying to deliver this. It was Taz and Stokely chirping on the mic at, back at each other. Yeah, because I was distracted by that. I was laughing at what they were going on there. But these two 
for some reason, this match just didn't hit its stride. And I think it's because it was so short in length that they just couldn't. They had eight minutes and they're both young in the game that it's like, well, how do we tell an efficient story in eight minutes when we're losing two elements of it plus time? You know what I mean? How do you make that work? The, the thing with house rules matches is the rules of the house, besides the one that can be introduced by the opponents, they never get utilized. They never get showcased in that match. Like, they're not going to a 19 count outside right. or acknowledging a 19 count on the outside, and then they're getting back in. Or they're not going to – I think one of them is the rope break. There's no rope break. So they're not utilizing tell that, that story. leveraging that, tell that story in the match. I'm not saying tell it every match, but just tell that story at some point in some of these matches when you're going to have house, house rules about it. I think it really helps the story along, but helps solidify that match as something unique or special. It's just putting a different framework on it that nobody's taking advantage of, essentially. So... The match was this match, essentially. We know Willow's going on to take on Monet in Double or Nothing. Is that going to be Monet's first match? I think so. Let me wrap back around to that. Question for you. Where's Julia go now? Because it <laughs> kind of scares me. Yeah, I don't know. I like that they did the angle with Brody and said, <laughs> okay, time to go back to work. You know what I mean? Like, just make that reset happen. With, you, <clears throat> with Julie, I think she's just, because of how young she is in the game, it's going to be, she's floating around or making, she already has the presence right now. Right. So she can pop up and have matches with anybody, essentially, out of nowhere. And it'll be legitimately high matches. I think eventually she'll get back to the TBS title, have another reign with that. But then it's how do we grow that? How do we grow past that? I think the future is undecided. Right now, it's more about, okay, you're not under the learning tree, apparently, but you're under a learning Thank tree God. that, yeah, I know, but you're under a learning tree that can help get you to where you need to go, and they're playing it right in the storyline of, we'll train you, we'll get you where you, what comes next, and get you brought up. She's out of the picture for at least two months for the TBS title. Probably more. But there's a lot of one-offs that can happen. And that can occur. I I think she'll be fine as long as she's not essentially a loss to Britt as soon as she comes back, a loss to Jamie as soon as she comes back, a loss to It's not a Peter. As long as she's not going to continue to take losses on the regular. My thought is she should be gone until double or nothing. Monet wins the title. Then you come out and you call your shot at Monet. That would make sense. Give right. you time to recuperate. Even if she probably would lose the Monet in a subsequent match, that at least gives a little Give bit more strong. aura. Give her gives her strong. strong. Yeah. Uh, look. Look, Yes. Monet comes out. They have their already stare down for double or nothing. Um, let's talk about Monet a little bit. We always said this is going to be a shorter one, but of course, then we go down rabbit holes. Yeah. If she doesn't do anything, if she doesn't, I know we just said that her first match is probably going to be a double or nothing. Man, I don't know. This is, I love Sasha slash Mercedes. I do. Nothing is drawing me to say, I can't wait to watch this match right now, though. Mm-hmm. I'm not buying Double or Nothing for Monet and Willow. No, because we've seen it before. All it's doing is giving Monet her win she couldn't get in the New Japan Strong Tournament. This is literally what this match is. Yeah. So, for us, I think, maybe I'm not speaking at turn here, but I think it comes down to... They're literally just putting us through the ringer. We can't get excited for this match because we already know what the outcome is because they're correcting a wrong Sasha feel she had or Mercedes feel she had, which sucks because if we're going to play this game throughout the ty- this whole run, it's going to be a long-ass run. It is. It is. So let me make reference to somebody else then. 
Soraya. We've talked about maybe when Mercer, and this was six months ago, maybe when she comes over, is this kind of her first match or something? How long before Mercedes ends up like Soraya? I don't know if the AEW fans, we are wrestling fans, and there's AEW fans, there's WWE fans, there's wrestling fans. How long before uh, Mercedes relegated to what Soraya is doing? Soraya had a title. She had the title. Mm -hmm. Now she's backstage. She's died. When was the last time you've seen one of her matches? Right. No, that's fair. I was this pissing money away. As of right now, for me, yes. Well, yeah, because it's not doing anything. There's nothing of not substance coming needle. out of this. No. And it's not that she wants to move the needle. It doesn't feel like. Like, it just feels like we're biding time, in her own words, until she goes back to the flagship. Yeah. And, and I mean, to that point, if I'm Tony Khan... If that's your end game, I can use you for how long I have you, but at what point do you stop caring and wanting to contribute to the brand? And what at what point does it become detrimental? I think for Soraya, it's more about, you know, she had been out of the ring for so long. She got her one and done title reign type thing. She's, but she's still very much an injury concern risk and all of that stuff. So it might be more beneficial to have her just run in the backstage area, have a match here or there. Because she's not coaching, but she's not, she's just not at the level she used to be. And that's fair. I mean, that happens with neck injuries and all of that stuff. So I think now being the coach and all of that stuff, is that something Mercedes is willing to do or is Mercedes only willing to look out for herself? God above may not agree with that, but we'll have to see with what, because I don't know if you heard that thunder, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> it, it's, but it's one of those things where we have to see what Monet is trying to get out of this run versus what I hope she's there to wrestle and have fun and take bangers. on these new exciting and have these bangers in that. Because I don't think she, right now, I don't know if she understands that, okay, you signed this contract. It may be three years long. You have to show up. Show up and show out. You have to wrestle. You have to build your stock. Because when the time comes and you want to go back to Papa H in the ship, they'll take you on name brand alone, but you're not going to get what you wanted out of it because they're going to see you and be like, well, you didn't really do much in the last three years. Cody in six years hustled, went around the world, wrestled at every company he could, created his own company, didn't take advantage of his own company when he was in it, and just held TNT titles and that and whatnot, built back up his stock to be a American Nightmare desirable get. Sasha's left on bad terms. She's probably already had conversations with Papa H to come back. But at the end of the day, if you're not showing up and showing out because you signed this con this big money contract with AEW, there's no point. There's literally no point. Agreed. Uh, agreed. International title match prior to this, just to throw this out, this is another thing I, I said in, in kind of hot topics. Fucking Wardlow's in a wreck hours before Dynasty. Yeah. Holy fuck, that looked, the vehicle looked rough. That looked horrible. That looked really bad. I'm glad he was okay, but Jesus Christ. That yeah. also made me think that he was going to have more going on in this match, but really just couldn't do it because they didn't, he was probably so shook it up, didn't know what the hell was going on, but... And I saw it earlier, prior to Dynasty, that, that he was in a wreck. So I figured, well, that he's off the card. But when he comes out and he just – he wasn't fully in the ring. He wasn't on fully yeah. on the steps. He would, he just peaked, and I'm like, oh, I'm worried. And it, we don't know, no, yet. But yeah. Maybe there's he was something. in a wreck. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, this this sucks. But well wishes, Wardlow. We love you. Da, 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 da. Hope everything is fine. Um, the match itself, can I tell you it was a good match, but I didn't care because I saw it 
a lot. I love Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. yeah. I, I love Kyle. Besides Adam, okay, besides Adam Cole of the Undisputed Era uh, in NXT, yada, 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 Kyle's always been my second that I've always yeah. went. I've never been a Roddy guy. The kingdom, I think, is overly stale. Mm. Overly stale right now. I just... As on paper, great technical match. It was a good match. There just isn't anything there for me to put on a plate and eat. Yeah. No, there isn't. There's nothing. I think the injury, Adam Cole's injury, extension of his injury, which is now apparently over because he can yeah, walk he by walked miracle. Yeah. He walked. Um, I think that hurt them building up what this could be. I think also misutilizing Wardlow somehow. Not just today. Just not right. today, but just overall. Overall, but then the mishandling of Wardlow at the when he went for the interaction, the AEW title, and then instantly dismissing him. That I think was just kind of weird. I feel like they could have extended that out a little bit more to make it more reasonable keep it less stale but in doing that they kind of just shot themselves in the foot so the kingdom has no purpose right now besides showing up and being roddy's lackeys for the title which Give is exactly what they the are ROH tag team champions lose consistently they do i i'm surprised they win proven ground matches at this point so i don't know what exactly i'm supposed to get excited by with the kingdom like, I don't. I think the only thing that came out of this match was Adam Cole giving Wardlow dirty looks at the end. Yep. Honestly, that's exactly what I have pseudo written down. Yeah. This was to start Adam and Wardlow. Clearly, with double or nothing. Double or nothing. Get him kicked out of the group. And then probably Adam has a stare down with Swerve at the end of double or nothing. And Wardlow's relegated again to and to whatever Archer and Hobbs. Yeah, no, no disrespect, but yeah. Well, that's exactly it. Uh, any big man in the business, except the Undertaker, really, and maybe Kane, is just relegated to losses. You're there to put over smaller talent, and you'll get a couple onesie twosies, cheap wins, and then you'll get you'll get the loss. Yeah. You'll beat Andrade, you'll beat Cheeseburger, you'll beat this, you'll beat that. When it comes to facing somebody, it's too much of the David versus Goliath mentality. Goliath needs to dominate some people to be relevant. Yeah. Give Hobbs, give Wardlow, give Archer. Not wins. I can't. Well, I I give behind Hobbs or Wardlow. Well, I'm going to go back, though. Now, Archer, yeah, not, it's not going to happen. But when I'm talking, when Archer first came in, he should have ran the gambit on people. Yeah. He should have gotten a TNT title, or he should have gotten a world title, at least something to kind of, or just have him beat people left and right for months and get him stood up. But we get so many of these false starts and stops and all of that, that just, it's detrimental to these guys. Really, they is. can't build. FTW match. This can go to just hell. Go fuck it. Fuck this match. Why? Why? I, I literally wrote. Why did he need to win this ego stroke? Why did he need this ego stroke? As soon as I saw his blurb, uh, attempting to get what is twenty six ninety seven different titles in the fucking was, world, yeah. I knew he was winning. I just was hopeful. I was like, maybe they'll give let Hook win this and then be done with it. Nope. God forbid. The crowd fucking hated it. Well, yeah. This match, and I don't remember the stars from Meltzer, but this match, maybe by a quarter or a half or whatever, got more than the TBS title match. Mm-hmm. And that's blasphemy. For me, uh, if yes. I've ever used it correctly, this match was nothing but shitting in the ring 
enrolling in it. Yeah. With FTW written on every goddamn thing that was in, introduced into the match. Yeah. I have to think that was Jericho's idea. Oh, of course it was. Because every course. other FTW ma- title match we've had, nobody's written FTW on it. Cans or, or, or anything. Fucking yeah. kendo stick. No. Yeah. This, this fucking sucked. This blew. We blew love up. the pay-per-view, but this blew. This was the lowest point of the pay-per-view. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if it was a quarter of a beer match for me. Just yeah. Because of the negativity around it. I'm not a Hook fan, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And I listen, it, for what Jericho did for the business, I respect. But what he's doing now for himself in the business, this is fucking stupid. He's taking advantage. He's taking Tony's advantage. Dumb. The last, and Tony's yeah. dumb for allowing it. Well, it goes back to Punk's comments. It needs a boss. You have to check these guys. They can't be the bookers, creators, creative. They can't be creative bookers and wrestle at the same time. Danielson's proving, okay, that's the exception because he's putting people over. He's giving people the opportunities. He's putting them over. Jericho is not doing that. Danielson can also still wrestle. That's true. That's 100% accurate. Danielson understands the wrestling aspects, the ins and outs, he can still put it in the ring. Jericho can't. Jericho could barely keep up with anybody last year. That's why he was overrated for me last year. Mm-hmm. Now he's just piss, uh, pissing me off, just showing up. And I don't think it's story trying to piss. You know, it, it, this is supposed to be a story of trying to piss us off. No, this is just him. He he goes try back. Himself. Yeah, but that's exactly it. He's just... Being right back, but also just he's just stroking his own ego. It's a blatantly obvious I have a pin over Hook because Hook only has two losses right now. Yeah, That's what that was. Jericho should have been losing this match like he lost a couple weeks ago, and it'd be done with that. You could still do the learning tree. Yeah. You could introduce There could have been Bill. learning moments in this match. Yes. Big Bill would have still came out Wednesday night and been you lackey. But, yeah. Women's title match, Tony Storm against Thunder Rosa. Um, Nigel is now on commentary because Taz had to go take care of Hook, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Holy fuck, was Nigel just in the back watching the Disney Channel? <laughs> yeah. Did you get all the references? Why was Nigel just talking about Disney movies the I whole think he... fucking match? <laughs> he either didn't know who Thunder Rosa was or he just really is a, made a bet with somebody said, listen how many fucking Disney references I can make in this match. <laughs> it was bad. The only one, I, did he get let it go? Did, did he not get frozen in? That's maybe the only one. He ran the gamut from, um, it definitely got Moana. He got yeah. the one with Bruno. Was it called yeah. Bruno? No, it was he, called Encanto. Yeah. Yeah. That he, he, he Fuck, he went back to uh, Mickey Mouse's first one with his Fantasia or whatever. Yeah. He got them all in except, I think, Frozen. Frozen. We well, couldn't let it go. Thank you. <laughs> couldn't let it go. This was a match. I don't know if it did what it needed to do or if it didn't do what it needed to do. It was good. I love Tony and Thunder. It was a match. I don't know where the story is going, though. I enjoyed the match because I thought it did. I think it did what it needed to do. I think it was to get Thunder a title shot against Tony and basically settle who she would win. But she, yeah, because she never got the rematch, but she also gave the total title basically to Tony at that point without losing it to her. So I think it was just to settle that kind of who would be the better woman in that regard. I think they did phenomenal with what they were given in that. Maybe it was biased because of the FTW stuff that it kind of carried over and made this elevated this one more. And I don't know, maybe in your case, it maybe soured it a little bit more because this was just one of those things where it was a good match. It did what it, I think it did what it needed to do. It gave the right return. It gave not the right returns, but it gave the right story to be told 
for what this is. I think also what didn't help it was the returns we thought were happening did not happen. Maybe. Maybe that's where I'm stuck sitting here, thinking that a, a Jamie or a Brit would have come out at the end to, just to do the stare down or whatever. Maybe. Well, and then they were like at the top of the – they were dragging it on at the top of the stage. And it made me think, oh, maybe. Maybe yeah. we're going to get something. Maybe this is where it's going to happen. And then it never happened. And I'm like, ah. I literally put no return as wild. Yeah. But it was a good match. It was it definitely. Was, it, I, it was, I love and respect both of them. I do. I think it ended up being the palate cleanser to the end of the pay-per-view because they had well, to find a way to get the bad taste out of people's mouths with what just happened in the FTW title match. Touche. Because the next three matches, oh boy, I would have paid triple, quadruple for everything to happen. This is where the pay-per-view... Listen, we just talked about good matches, bad matches, da, 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 da. This is where the pay-per-view fucking starts. This is where the pay-per-view mm-hmm. ends for me as well. And I'm not saying anything bad about the ladder match or and or the AEW title match. This was your first match you announced. And I know we always say championship matches yeah. should be last, da 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 when this is a dream match, and this is more than any... Listen, we can't break down this match. And not that we're breaking down matches, so to say, it's about this, drivers. This time, but yeah, agreed. I'm starting to get the feels already. Just It's playing in my head again. I, I watched it since, and it's like, how the story, the layers, the everything in between... Adding in the subtle hints, the talking points, like they built it into the beautiful. The one that stands out to me is that Danielson made a point to say he's not as fast or agile as uh, Osprey. And at the end of the match, that's what it came down to. Yeah. Both guys, he got into a situation he did not want to get into, and he was screwed. And that was just one example of the beautiful layer upon layer upon layer that they had going for it. Outstanding. I wrote my notes this match of the year, maybe of the past five years. Without a doubt. Could be more. Yeah. That's, it, it surpassed the hype we put on it. I'm speechless yet. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it did everything. I, I I don't know. We could fantasy book right now. We'll, you could bring Steamboat and Savage back, and I don't yeah. know. Be prepared. This is now my match to show people that have never watched wrestling to watch mm-hmm. wrestling. That was Steamboat yeah. Savage. Yeah. This was Brett Owen. This would. It's on that level. Yeah. It surpassed that level in some parts. Mm-hmm. This, because you don't need it. There's layers of stories just in the match, yeah. but there's layers of stories in the career. This isn't the last time they're going to meet. Let's no. just throw that out there. But I think it's the acclaimed and Swerve and Lee thing that, like, the first one is the best one. It's fun. Not yeah. knocking that it won't be close to match of the year when they meet again at Forbidden Door or at right. World's End or wherever they meet again this year, or all in out loud or whatever. But I don't think they can do anything better than this fucking match. And that's the trap we fall into. Because we say they can't. And then they do. And if there's two right guys in the wrong. world... Yeah, if there's two guys in the world that could do that, it's these two. Yeah. AEW has the four professional wrestlers right now that could surpass their previous matches... By building upon them appropriately. Danielson, Osprey, Okada, and Omega. Yeah. Those four guys can do that. And they do it every time they step into the ring. Uh, the one quote I wanted to call out from this match, from Callis, 
It's Time to Beat Him, Not Get an Autograph from Him was one of the best, coldest lines I've heard. Yeah. Like, Callus pisses me off, but that was a great, cold-ass, you hard often line. Work. He does piss me yeah. off in a good way. That was a great line. Yeah. Because it showcased his frustration with Osprey being starstruck while in the match, kind of hinting towards an eventual break-off from the Callus family. It added even more to it. It foresaw future breaks or future oh. things coming forward. I think the Callus family in general just but it isn't long in the tooth because there's yeah. Osprey is already the member. Yeah. Fletcher has also outgrown the Callus family as well. Agreed. Oh, hundred percent. Fletcher's outgrown it. Takeshita, I think, has outgrown it. It was on the borderline of outgrowing it. I think it's just going to be Hobbs. Nothing against Hobbs. Hobbs gets screwed again. Yeah. <laughs> we go back to the book. The book, yeah. The, he's got a long fucking story. I don't know when his story is ever going to begin or finish. But <laughs> he's in the prelude of his story. It really is. The notes. Hey, this, this is going to be a great career once we get to it. <laughs> make make reference and if this is story it hook line and sinkered the way it ended with the the storm driver like we yeah. both we texted each other at the same time I sent you sent it came at the same fucking time that I had send <sighs> that storm driver is crazy mm-hmm. Will said during the press conference, I didn't watch the press conference right after, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Next day. Uh, he admits he didn't see the doctor. He is not going to use it again. Yada, yada, yada. I, I really thought Danielson broke his neck, his shoulder, yeah. anything from his belly button up. If it's story, man, you guys did great. If not, and it was legit, I think it was more legit because – Osprey clearly was very emotional. I'm not going to say he was crying, to put it that way, but I think he was, in my heart of hearts, I think he had tears talking to Danielson backstage after this. He felt horrible. Like, this was his, this Danielson's his boy. If it's layers and we're, we're getting sucked into it for later on down the line, chef's kiss. If it's real, Danielson, I'm glad that you're okay. Words have come out that he's, you know, okay. Perfect. Everything about this match, I'm telling you, is perfect. I can't gush enough about this match. I'm going to be that guy. This is all the work, and we're eating it up because Good. This, the way he, Danielson sold it to way Osprey was selling it afterwards – the line in the press conference, I'm not using it anymore. That's the end of your next match because it's going to become he didn't execute that move. He's not going to be able to put away Danielson. Until he executes that move, that's how he puts away Danielson. So that's going to be the layer that's added into this. And, and I think it's going to say so. I, I could see Osprey Danielson – Two at Forbidden Door for a title, which is coming up later. We'll talk about that later yeah. on. And then three is in London, and we're doing it again. I think this becomes a wins with the oh, the Storm Driver in number three. Oh, see, I was saying. So my thought was. We're going to avoid using it in match two. Osprey loses match two because of that. Match three, he doesn't want to do it, but he does it anyways yeah. to end Danielson's career, full time career, and just bookends it. So it's almost like that Sean and Rick moment. Yeah. I love you. I like yours better. I like yeah. yours better. Yeah. But, but man, oh. Layers upon layers. Amps it in match two, but doesn't hit it. I, he he might hit it. He might hit it. 
if Osprey said Osprey struggles with it, Daniel counters out, or he pushes, or goes for something else. Danielson counters into it, hits it, and then hits the psycho knee and ends it. That's the crux of match two. Match three is now everything's on the wall. I'm ready. It, this, this is, by the way, storyline of the year already, if that's what we're going for. Throwing everything to these two for the year, they're going to be walking out with crushes. Yeah. Not moving on, but we have to. Um, do a fucking pure craziness, which was contained, essentially, to great craziness, the tag team ladder yeah. match, the box and FTR. I did know who was going to win, essentially. Not that they told me. AEW didn't call me. But they made reference to the records of both teams meeting, da 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 I'm like, well, we can't have it three to one. Right. There's no way. Right. It's not going to be that overshadowed. We're not going to a seven series with these two. We will go to five. So we had to make it two to two. As soon as they brought that up, I'm like, well, we just, we would have, I would have picked the box just throwing it yeah. out anyway. Right. Um, it's still, I, I was still, I didn't know who was going to win. You know, yeah. as I, as I sit back as a fan, as a mark and just watch this. What? So before we get to the craziness of pseudo end, I loved everything about this. This is tag team match of the year so far for me. It really is. This was and it with the mat the spots throughout the match were what needed to happen at that point in time. They're perfectly placed. They did they pushed it over. This is the best of their four. Yes. Right now. And that's because they did a little bit of layering with it. I know what I want for match five. The spike shoe? No. Well, that can happen. But I want it to be a dog collar match. Because then, listen, this was the Bucks match that FTR stepped into and lost. Dog collar match is FTR's match because it grounds the Bucks. And the Bucks can't get away from it. Yep. It's a perfect comeuppance type thing with it, whether it's with the titles or not. I think it's just the perfect circle of comeuppance for them. And it makes it makes the transition. It makes it worthwhile. But I also think it puts us in a situation where we may get seven out of it. Eight, There's a possibility. F, FTR is here for another year and a half. So at least. So there's that possibility as well of – Maybe we get seven out of these two. But the match itself, fuck, the shoe, pulling off the shoe, yeah, making that whole reference, which apparently there's stats around that because I think the Bucks are three and two when his <laughs> shoe comes off. Right. So <laughs> it, it, it just was so it – did, it did wonders for that. The 450 through the table. Yeah. Scared the shit out of me. The pile driver on the ladder made me yeah, cringe. But it all comes down to what we wanted. Yeah. Guy it carrying was, popcorn through the fucking arena. You know, just ends up in the ring. Ends up in the ring. Pulling He's, people off. Sting fan still there, huh? Yeah, it's wild what Scapegoat can do. Uh, the reveal... The devil smile. Yeah. Ah, that was perfect. So let me ask you this, and I've been waiting since it happened to now ask you this. Has Jack Perry just solidified that he's still a pillar? Yeah. This made Jack Perry. This yeah. whole situation well, made we'll Jack Perry. You're in a hot second. Well, we're not even I'm not even including Wednesday. I'm talking about the punk thing. Everything just made Jack Perry a star. Yeah, yeah. I think this was the perfect fucking move for him. I I don't think Jungle Boy will ever be brought up when you mention Jack Perry again. Not that I hated no. Jungle Boy, right? But that Jack was Perry. his. Well, and I've thought about it for a long time is how do you transition out of Jungle Boy Jack Perry 
to just Jack Perry. This is how you do that. With a fucking anvil. This so, is how you do he, it. We thought a couple weeks ago, what the fuck were they trying to do? Showing the footage, do everything. You know, why would they do that, etc.? I still kind of really the, the, I disagree. I think it kind of helped their cause. I, I think it was weird that they did it for the storyline. But for some reason, I think that footage being shown has also helped Jack Perry solidify him as people love him and oh. people want Jack Perry. They want more of him because they it created a controversial cloud around him again. It, it's take uh, the footage, despite what we think of it and whether it should have been shown or not, did more good for Jack than it did anything else. Okay. So, again, would I have shown it? No. But I think at the end of the day, it's helped Jack Perry in this whole thing kind of push it forward. Um, what title is Jack getting? I don't know, see, because international title seems to be held up. I think Jack Perry's just going to be around right yeah. now, unless he gets something in ROH. I don't know, but I think he's just around right now, just kind of helping or doing things like that. Uh, and I'm hoping that, actually. I'm hoping. Yeah, I, I agree. I have to say this about this match. I would like to thank the fans for chanting, please be careful. Yes. <laughs> I was just dying. <laughs> I'm just laughing at that. <laughs> yeah. Match of the year with Osprey and Danielson to match of the year with Bucks and FTR in two different categories. Moving into Swerve and Joe. The all again, this would be a contender mm-hmm. because I, there was layers of this and there were stories of this. And it's rough to have this match on after these two. And I'm not saying they yeah. didn't steal right. the show, essentially. But it's rough after two amazing matches. <clears throat> the only thing bad I have to say about this match is, why the fuck was he wearing Dark Spider-Man? And I, I didn't... This whole swerve thing coming out, I'm oh. stupid when it comes to stuff like that. I hate yeah. it. What is it referenced to? It's Black Panther. Oh. So... Uh, now I it know. made now sense. I yeah. It now, but yeah. And so black with it being Black Panther, I think it kind of. I thought it was cool. I thought it was. I won't lie. I thought it was out of place a little bit, but I didn't know. But I get why they went down that path and that. Now I do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was more of a okay. It's like Black Panther getting ready to go to battle because that's been. Now actually thinking about this and going back into the lore. I actually now like this a little bit more. So in the Black Panther movies, to be king, you can challenge the king to a fight. And if you win that fight, you become the new king of Wakanda. So him being Black Panther, he's challenging the king of AEW, Joe, to basically, I want to become king of AEW, so I need to challenge a champion. And he was looking to take the crown, and then that layer on top of it, Made sense with it. Makes complete sense. I, I'm not the Marvel or comic essentially guy, <clears throat> so I'm glad you, you know, a little bit of a backstory for us that aren't. Completely makes sense now, and don't listen to what I said five minutes ago. I completely love it now. So, yeah. Yep. In this feud, this match did everything it needed to as well. It re- I, I love this match. Like I said, I, I really did. I'm glad... Swerve won. I'm glad all of this. It, I don't want to say it got lost, though, tonight. I think there should have been some more separation from the first two matches. And I'm not speaking bad of it. The Danielson and Bucks match, essentially, I was worn out emotionally by the time this match yeah. came around. I didn't know if I had enough emotion it, it, to give these two. <laughs> Anxiety, stress-driven, three back-to-back-to-back matches. 47-year-old, I'm having a fucking heart attack at 1130 at night. <laughs> With the two W's you already drank on top of that. It wasn't right? it was driving you. I, I will agree. I thought the same, but I was also like, 
to me, it was more of, okay, we've done the spectacle, the majesty. Let's bring it back down to AEW standard levels, kick our feet up, and just watch it transpire. And I love that it went, I love that transition because I think it made it, it made it even more special because it wasn't a letdown match. It was more of this is the product we can put out week to week, month to month, year to year. And it's consistently good. It was consistently great top notch wrestling that can transcend time. And it puts over our younger stars to push the company forward. And essentially one of our new pillars to be established. Thank you. That was on the list to ask. It was, it, it literally cemented Swerve as their pillar. And now we go back to the discussion. Your pillars, there's three right now. It's Swerve, MJF, and Jack. Because yeah. Jack's very established. The point is, you probably say we don't have a pillar for the women anymore. We don't. Because the way they've treated Brit has just gone off the rails. But, the women in general, it's just been not great. Yeah, hitchly, hitchly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but I think it just finally established Swerve has grown up from us hating that he beat the acclaimed when he should have lost to us praising what he's been doing with the Mobile Embassy with Nana, with his character development itself. Because let's be honest, this, if last year the stuff with AR Fox's visa and everything didn't transpire and he would have been able to do what he needed to do, I think Swerve would have made AR Fox. And yeah. I think Swerve became that guy that can make people relevant again and make them somebody to be desired to see work for the fans and that. I agree. I agree. I've said it when we started talking about this in this segment. I think we both are giving it kudos. This is a six pack for me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Really, overall, this is a six pack. As of right now, this is overtaking. It had WrestleMania up there. Probably is pay per view of the year. And it's no shot on anybody else. Because of the stories from WrestleMania and some of the matches and everything like that, I really did have it at number one because yeah. of the spectacles. This is this is going to be rough, and I know AEW brings it, and we say it the following month, and Double or Nothing will probably be talking. Mm-hmm. This is going to be tough to get past number one for me because yeah. there's there's definitely two match of the years on this card. For mm-hmm. me, I I don't know unless Jesus Christ and Satan come to double or nothing and have a match. I don't know. This is probably going to be pay per view of the year. So being nicely, yes, a six pack on real ratings, but this is a fucking keg for me. Well, right. let's well let's be honest. We got drunk off of Osprey and we're blackout from Osprey and Danielson, and then we don't know what we, we had after that. We did a line from the Bucks and FTR. <laughs> it was just something, something or another. <laughs> Everything had hitting, and it hit well, and it hit often. Yeah. It, it, for real, there was only one match I completely hated on this card. Other ones did what they needed it to. They were short on time because – Sometimes the women just are still getting shit on, you know, always wave that flag. Um, there was only one match that I would have, if I could have fast forwarded live, I would have fast forwarded live. And we all know what that was. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Man, that would have been nice, wouldn't it have been? <laughs> Can you fast forward live? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's take a break, get a drink, do what we need to do. Um, Come back, and then third segment kind of disencapsulates stuff overall. Uh, what happened on Dynamite, what happened on Raw, what happened here, what happened there, what we like just in general of wrestling to keep this a little bit shorter. Yep. What up, everyone? This is Elride, the one-man zoo, and I have to just say, 
there's a little goat in me. So if you like can crushers, I eat them. They're not trash. Eat it. Beat it. Welcome back, everybody, to Can Crushers Wrestling <laughs> Podcast. It's time to talk about segment three and talk about the week in wrestling. But I do have an interesting statistics thing to come up. What did so, you do during break? Uh, I did some research, did some digging, did some things. I uh, came across this post by Brandon Thurston, who's a wrestling economic uh, guy, wrestlingeconomics.com, and he listed the live gates for every WrestleMania. Uh, ooh, the, the year it was made and what its equivalent to 2024 would be, so the inflation, with inflation included. So I don't want to make you guess what it would be, but I think there's some interesting stats here that we can pull out, obviously. Uh, but from 1980, in 1985, right. the live gate was a half a million in 1985. By 2024, with inflation for 2024 numbers, it was 1.5 million. Okay. Think about that. That's huge. It's huge. But, but 2024, WrestleMania 40's live gate, $38.5 million. Damn. So, so to give some of the hot ones that we love and that we talk about. Yeah, now. yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk through it. Um, here's an intro. Let's go 2001 because I will talk about WrestleMania 17 to the live on end. WrestleMania 17's gate in 2001 was $3.5 million. That yeah. little. That little. By today's standards, that would be $6.2 million. Okay. Still low. Lower than I thought. Yeah. Very, very low. Um, here's an interesting one. What year do you think was the first time they posted, and by their year standards, they posted double-digit live gates? So... 10 million live gate by that year's standards. What year would you have thought that would have been? Well, the way that you just roll those numbers out, I have to think it's much later. What was it? Rock Hogan? You're saying in 18? Yeah. Well, WrestleMania 18, surprisingly enough, it was only 3.9 million that year was their live gate. Really? I thought that with that being a, a megalodon and, uh, you know, I, I thought, so it's not prior to that then. Listen. No, it's way later than that then. Was it just last year? No, it was surprisingly enough. WrestleMania 29 was the first time they posted a twenty a double digit live gate. So by twenty twenty by twenty thirteen standards, WrestleMania twenty nine, eleven point three million. Adjusted for this for inflation, fifteen point two. Holy moly. Yeah. In WrestleMania thirty they actually dropped down under ten for well, the live say, gate. What was the jump from twenty twenty eight to twenty nine then? Was it a mega jump? Three million. Eight point three million in twenty twelve was the live gate. So, so think about that. That was the Cena Rock series, both of those. So the rematch, I would assume, was the one that generated that bump. So much in my head right now. I, yeah. I want to know my two kind of like two of my favorites, so give me four and ten at some time, but yeah. I have to get this out of my head or I'm not gonna say it. With the amount of – and I know we're talking millions here, people. I know we really are. Um, with the amount of money, fanfare, yada, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that the first 10 years, okay, mm-hmm. I could probably see those numbers continuing just in the, in the millions before we get to double digits. I thought maybe after that, and there was some rough years in there before everybody jumps on me. I understand that. But I thought maybe after that, it had to have been in double digits. If not, you know, we don't look at money a lot. I thought maybe yeah. looking at fucking triple digits by this year, essentially. I mean, 
Yeah, we're, we're not even close. Years in and they're they're only bringing in. I'm just gonna throw it out a stupid number, fifty million. Okay, yeah. they're only bringing in just to, to round it to equal numbers, fifty million. That's crazy. This is their biggest show, and they've only hit double digits essentially eleven years ago. Yeah, that blows my mind. Oh yeah, that it's, absolutely blows my mind. It's wild. Uh, first ten years. Uh, they really, I think the largest amount they got was three and a half million at WrestleMania six for Hogan. Uh, give me three since Andre and Hogan, one of the matches of the century being marketed by in 1988, WrestleMania three live gate was 1.6 million. And I know understanding money to then that means yeah. a lot. What's it, what's that one point six mean now? Four point four million. It's still for Andre Hogan in my head. That's not enough. No, no, no. Um, going back to uh, Warrior Hogan, just for today was eight point three million. So they got close to breaking it by today's standards, but didn't happen. You wanted WrestleMania four earlier right. in ten, right? So WrestleMania four, one point four million. They actually went down, lost point two compared, to, the year compared to Hogan and Andre. Uh, Ten breaks even at a million. Wow! In fact, according to these stats, uh, the last show under a million. Besides COVID, because it was zero, they didn't sell any tickets, obviously. Well, they right. sold tickets, but they had to refund and whatnot. Um, the last show, Last Mania Under a Million, was actually WrestleMania 13. Wow. Eight. So they only made 800000 That blows my mind. Listen, early years, again, one, two, two. <sighs> How what's two? Because it was all over the fucking country. It, two was one point one million. Okay, whatever. It just blows my mind that they, they weren't in double digits, honestly, by ten. Yeah, it, because the fanfare and the amount that they had is probably maybe it's all in our heads, but they were paying people like Pamela Anderson to come or mm-hmm. people like Raj or da da da. Maybe. They were doing it for nothing, just to say, hey, we're, we're, they weren't doing it yeah. for nothing. You know right. that. Right. I thought, like, Pamela Anderson, we, they had to give them a million. Yeah. No. They'd be I, fucking I, losing then. I think they didn't I, lose. Right. I think by today's standards, it would have been a million, but they probably only had to pay her, like, 30000 to show up then. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I was going to make a point. Uh, what blows my mind is they didn't even break $5 million. Until WrestleMania 23. That was the first time they posted a $5 million gate. That's by their at your standards. Yeah. By that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That. Unbelievable. Great find. Uh, yeah, it's. This is something else. I mean. Yeah, I'll have to send you this list. Yeah, you need to send me that. Because I'll yeah. probably deep dive into this, just looking at it, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. We started with WWE. Why don't we do hot to- – well, not hot topics. We already did it, does. Yeah, we We're did round do those. <laughs> Roundup, essentially. So, yes, I did remember at the beginning of the show that I went to SmackDown. <laughs> so <laughs> <Sure>, I reminded <laughs> you. Thought, thought it was a work. Um, listen, it was in Pittsburgh. Got a late call to be able to go do it. That was really cool. Um, listen, two noteworthy things about SmackDown when I was there. Uh, the AJ LA night match was actually phenomenal. It, it did what it needed to do. I kind of, in my heart of hearts, I knew AJ was going to win because I think a week or two earlier, Cody had already made reference to AJ about NWA championship and, you know, they kind of never met before, whatever that whole spiel was. And I 
I don't think it's time for a face face because LA Knight, listen, as much as I don't like him, he's still amazingly hot. That's not yeah. Cody's first opponent to you bury LA Knight in my thoughts. If you put LA and Cody a backlash, yeah, Cody's not, not losing. Good. Cody's not losing for a while. So EJ can take the loss and still look amazing. Oh yeah, exactly. He's he's at that level of he's at that legendary level, so people are going to buy it. Okay, Cody beat AJ. That makes sense. LA Knight, I think he's just going to be. I don't even think he sniffs that title picture for this year. I don't think he sniffs the heavyweight a heavyweight title ever. I think he gets a US. I agree. Team. I agree. He'll run with those, but he'll never touch the heavyweight championships. There's no disrespect. You it's can tell not, it's just the way it is. Being an IC and U.S. champion. Yep. And so. be great in that. Yeah, and be great in that regard. What was your other top? My other one was Bailey Naomi. And with all the shenanigans happening kind of like directly behind us, my thoughts of that main event were Bailey and Naomi because you showed damage control and Bianca and Jade for a reason. So I thought, oh, listen, they were right next to each other. They were chirping. I kept turning around thinking, all right, a melee is going to happen there. Mm-hmm. And then because Bailey and Naomi are friends with them, da 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 da, they go help them, double count out, and we get craziness ensuing in the commercial break so they can get up to the the balcony essentially and help them when tiffy came out and i don't know how this resonated on tv the fucking place went i'm spitting all over the place because i'm getting excited so <laughs> voices here when tiffy came out the place exploded yeah. for tiff tiff is uh, we're ruining all crushy awards tiff is already the female breakout star of the year yeah i i, I don't know who is going to overtake it I don't no know one. if you can. Yeah. No. The place went apeshit crazy. She is already in that pseudo realm of, yeah, she's trying to be dastardly. She she could do anything in the middle of the ring, and we were going to cheer for her. Yeah. She's that over with. Everybody just loves her. Everybody wants to see that next thing. Who did we talk about being... Um, oh, Rhea was talking about it at WrestleMania, that she's going to be the one that gets rid of the horsewomen, da 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 Yeah. I think Tiffy's there, too. Already without a title. Not knocking her mm. NXT stuff, but already, I think she's already there, because she's just... The popularity's there. It's yeah. going... She's going places with where she's at right now, and they're booking her appropriately for how they need to present her and get her forward to your point my breakout star too is going to be tiffy because she's just running away with it and taking anything that they give her in going for it going for broke going for gold whatever it is i think it becomes a thing i think it presents presents an interesting conundrum in the next week when we talk about backlash next week are they going to pull that trigger or not And I'll have thoughts on that next week. You can have thoughts on that next week, and I'll have my thoughts, too. It's not outside the realm of possibilities that it could happen. Right. It, I think, would it be considered a Liv Morgan taste, or is it a run? And we don't have to answer those now. Yeah. I say a little bit teaser, but. I think think that's a great point. That is a hundred percent a great point. What does that run look like at this stage in the game? Two months, three months after a debut, whatever it is. What does that look like? How's Trips feel about her? Well, I think we have our answer right now. I do too. Without spoiling it, I do too. Yep. yep. Agreed. So. Um, we're just throwing shit against yeah, the wall, yeah. essentially. I, what, what else did you like WWE-wise, essentially, then? I, I want to call this out. Tag titles, man, or something. I'm trying hard to digest. 
I think the SmackDown tag title, new tag titles are fine. The designs. I love them. They're the old, they're, they're the old, they're the 2000. Demolition. Early, tw- yeah, yeah, the early the on. old callback ones. I love them. I would buy I that love title. Love those ones. The raw ones? Ugh, that is Far forced. Reach. Forced. Yeah. I don't like, like them at all. I hate those raw t- tag titles. I will say they're better than the Spartan armor ones that we had. Yeah. But those are just... We're forcing it at that point. That world title design. Because it's the same... It's the same design as Priest. It just has a red ribbon on it. Yep, red ribbon. Same as Rhea, besides it being a black belt. Right. But at least on SmackDown, there's the... Whatever Cody has, the emblem... As yeah. Cody's title. And Bailey's got the same thing. Okay, so those are your championships, whatever. Yeah. At least there's separation of what the they, tag titles. It looks completely different. It is a you 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 know it's a tag title. If yeah. there are two titles next to each other, you know it's a tag title. You take priest title and one tag title from our truth, and you put them in the ring and you blink and you look real quick, you don't know which one's which. Yeah. Unless you really see, and that red's not predominant on there. No. It's just a little... It's a hint. It's, it's a, a hint. kindergartner drawing on it. Yeah, exactly. I don't like them. Uh, not a fan. Not a fan whatsoever of them. No. But at least we got something different, so we'll take it. Um, right. I think from WWE-wise, the other big thing is we got Tama Tonga, this bloodline thing has just reignited what we thought could be going stale. They picked back up, turned it in something completely different. So I'm loving the direction that's going now and how that's proceeding forward. I am too. I am too. Uh, just disregarding real quick everything. Uh, draft is all going to be covered next week. So yep. yes, we are recording Saturday morning, but we like keeping everything encapsulated the way that we do it. So we'll cover the draft all next week. But Yes, with Solo essentially making himself the tribal chief. Without or at least it appears that way. Yeah. Right. Uh, Heyman scared shitless of him, where he had, I don't want to say he had power over Roman, but he would go nose to nose with Roman a little bit. He I could fight of Solo. Well, he knew, he knew with Roman it was a conversation, and Roman would seek his advice. With Solo, Solo don't give a shit. Solo wants the bur- world to burn. And right. he's taking words that Heyman said quite literally about there's consequences to losing. So now Solo is taking that and just burning it all down. Yeah. And if he is the tribal chief, great. But I don't. I know he's getting marching orders from others. And that's what makes this... Ten times better. Is he's acting right now as it, but really the final boss is calling these shots. You think? And when that reveal hap- yeah. And when that reveal happens, chef's kiss. Let me say, how long is <clears throat> Jimmy MIA? For a long time. I think so that, Jimmy's, that spear through the table killed him. I think so. I think they're going to, like, well, then Solo attacked him. Tama took him out. Unless he's going to make a run in for, uh, to help KO and Randy at some point. I don't think that's the case. I think he's gone. I think they put him off TV for a while to sell this. And he comes back down the line when we try to reclaim whatever the bloodline actually is. It's going to be he comes back to save his brother at some point. I think it's save his brother or save Roman. Okay. Because Roman is not calling these shots. No. Roman, no, Well, that's why so not allowing Paul to call him. Yep, exactly. This is Roman is methodical. This is chaos. Yeah. And I love it. I love it too. There, There's 
so many more layers now to the bloodline and ready for the big fucking star. Could Cody at some time have to help Roman? I think so. And I think it happens in in November. Right. Under that. Because I think it'll be four on four. You need a fourth man. Cody's going to eventually get into the crosshairs of this new bloodline regime. It's keeping separated for a while. while, yeah. Well, I don't want to say well after SummerSlam, but... I think SummerSlam <clears throat> might... The catalyst Ignite to it. get it, yeah. To push it. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, outside of that, I'm trying to think. Rhea's on the shelf, so hopefully she'll be better uh, coming up here. We got... Dom on I, the shelf now, too. Dom's on the shelf. Although his doesn't appear to be... He doesn't need surgery, I don't think, besides reports that are coming out from other people. So... Hopefully that figures that out with Judgment Day. I think the split may actually happen with Judgment Day just by necessity of injuries right now, the way things are going. But we had we had a a look of Dom and Liv <clears throat> together. Mm-hmm. I don't want it. It might work. Don't get me wrong. I don't want it because I don't want when Rhea comes back. And Liv is champion. Let's just throw that out there. I'm not saying it's this week, next week, or whenever, but let's let's call a horse a horse. Yeah. That's when Rhea comes back, essentially. Mm-hmm. Liv, I would think Liv will be the champion. Yeah. I don't want it forced over Dom. That That's the story. We're going to fight over Dom and the title. It may yeah. work, and I may change my thoughts down the line it was just too early for them fuck she just left last week and Dom's already got a wandering eye for another mommy too early for me are they A playing Dom as a simp card here so we're getting in custody battle of him or are they playing him as the next Eddie Guerrero and Latino building him Latino heat where mommy's gone for one week and now I have a wandering eye. Yeah, I don't, I think it's too soon. Well, now that he's on a shelf for a little yeah, bit, a little bit, I, I don't think we go down that, that path. I think they might because it gives him something to do. If he's only rehabbing, he can still come to TV and do what he needs to do. So they might just go down that path to have that happen. And then when Rhea's ready, this all gets blown up at some capacity to that. Does Liv pseudo join the Judgment Day for a week or two then, essentially? No, I think she draws him away from the Judgment Day. Yeah, that's where I was going to. Yeah, I think that's the catalyst to move Dom out. He doesn't. He doesn't beat anybody up, doesn't turn on anybody. He just naturally drifts away from Judgment Day because he doesn't have his mommy, essentially, to keep him wrangled into it. Yeah, he's already little linked with Santos now mm-hmm. and Legato. Yep. Still who's fighting the LWO for yep. a year and a half now. Right. <clears throat> but, yeah, JD, I think, gets lost in the shuffle. Finn can do Finn things because he's got notoriety. He's Priest gonna, is your champ. Finn and Priest is going to happen. Clash at the castle, probably. So, so yeah. Judgment Day lasted longer than we thought. We we're going to throw longer. shit against the wall. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it lasted longer. It grew. It turned into something more relevant than what we thought. And surprisingly, it looks like injury is what's going to be the catalyst to kind of push it away yeah, and break it down. What else you got? WWE-wise, let's see where Imperium goes from here now that they're down a member in that. Nothing against Geo. No, nothing against Kaiser, I mean. 
I think this is a a good move. I think Geo can do something and actually pull from it. I think he yeah. could be I don't want to say a la Cedric, but I I don't know if I want to say he sniffs the title, but I, I think he, he can transition into something else that makes him. Kaiser's a tough sell for me. Yeah, I, I I have a feeling that him and Gunther are going to have a blow up here in seconds as well. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, Imperium's done for me as well. So I think we know where Imperium goes or where Tiffy goes in the draft based on who gets drafted first because we know Ludwig and Tiffy are item. Right. I think my point to that statement is where does that storyline go? To me, I don't think Kaiser's any more than a lackey. And I think he has to stay associated with Gunther. So he's going to do whatever he can to make him happy. So whatever show they end up on, it's going to be to make Gunther happy. Is it find another member to kind of bring into the fold? Is it to what is going to happen here to develop it? And I'll pull in the Alpha Academy stuff right now. Right. That's imploding on its own right. Looks like they're going to take their marching orders, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Minimal. And so to your point with uh, Gunther and Ludwig, if they do blow up, I think it's because Gunther adds Gable as another member of Imperium. I truly think that might be a catalyst. We've been saying if you love that yeah. idea. Because then it pushes Kaiser to do more, be more ruthless in that, to survive being removed from Gunther. I'm stuck on Geo. Does Geo drop back down to NXT and do a cool <laughs> run? I think he does. I think he he provides a good catalyst for the NXT. Because yeah. NXT was supposed to get draft picks in this, I thought. I did too. And I, I don't know what happened there, but they didn't get any on Monday. So I think he does go down and kind of gets a good draft. Maybe gets drafted or just gets sent down. And he has a decent run there. I think he can be in the North American title picture. I think he can build himself up right to be on. the NXT champion at some point. They put a lot, they added some sympathy to him because he got kicked out of Imperium in the way he did. Take that next step. Did you know instantly he was getting kicked out? The 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 fake hugs and everything. Yeah, were, it was too it much. Was oversold. Yeah, rubbing his head. I'm like, well, this is when they break up. Boom, done. They should have just let him walk off like normal and then pull the trigger. Tackle from behind. Yep. Yeah. What else you got? <sighs> um. Nothing. We included the Alpha Academy kind of thing. You know, Chad turned heel, so I, I have Drew Sheamus. You got Drew and Sheamus? All right, what do you got? I don't know. I don't want it. We're going to get it. I think they just need something for Drew to do, and Sheamus is a safe option. And it's – listen, I know Sheamus has had matches, right? I understand. But they haven't been barn burner matches. Yeah. These two grew up together. They drank together, yada, 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 all of that. It's a great first rivalry for Sheamus to come back on. Take an L, make mm-hmm. Drew look like the biggest bastard working on his neck, did it continue with that and everything. Yep. But it is a, it is a great, all right, Sheamus, let's make sure you really are okay. Yeah, with your homeboy to protect you. Yeah, let's. That's exactly what it is. Let's test the waters. That's a great way of putting that. It's let's test your waters. Make sure you are in the clear, and then we'll give you something more to do after that. Um, I think he'll be fine. I think he's shown that he's been pretty decent in the ring and all that. So. We'll see. I think it's a formidable name because Sheamus has now entered that higher profile superstar. You can put Randy Orton-esque thing of, you can plop him into anything, you're like, oh, it's Seamus, so it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Body Uh, shaming, though. The motherfucker went to body shaming. Why? Well, because everybody else did, because why not? But I love that Seamus is like, oh, I got called up early, so I wasn't in shape. I'm like, 
okay, fair enough. Let's see what you can do. Yeah. Day one at the gym, he went for it. So, listen, I, I've always kind of liked Seamus. I just there's something about him that he just listen. I want to go have a beer with him. I really yeah. do. Oh yeah, he he'd be a fucking blast to talk about. He's a huge soccer fan. I, I wouldn't mind getting in a conversation with him about soccer or whatever. So I let, a little bit of my heart goes out to him. And we get Seamus against Shinsuke. Okay. Is he just waiting for his contract to end? I know I he, at this point. he's fucking taking money to the bank each and every week. But he's like, dude, just Cut me. get me out of here. Yeah, I, I think he was done with it with Vince, and then nothing really came out of it. But Triple H wants to use him because he's a good hand. He's yeah. a good, he's a great wrestler. But I think you're right. I think he's just like, when's my shit done? Let me go be with Okada. Yeah, let me go hang out with my friend. And I, if there's one this year that I will say that I'd probably put money on, not that we condone betting or anything, but I would imagine, yeah. I would imagine he's. You know, following Tyler and Becky. Yep. Right on the way. So let's talk about Becky. Okay. We, we get this uh, essentially main event, which I'm glad that they gave them the main event. Yeah, I Even am though too. it was a shitty battle royal. I think they could have done it some way different, but. Well, they they can't do a battle royal to save their lives, but that's a different story for a different time. Right. Yeah. And we're not just saying women. We're talking all of WWE. All of them, the only yeah. thing good about a battle royal is a Royal Rumble in WWE. Do you think it was right to put it on Becky? This is this is my last thing on WWE I have, by the way. Do you think yeah. it was good to put on Becky? With the women involved, yes, because I think it builds the story up for Liv to take it off of her in a one-on-one match. I think if she would have won the title right away, it would have been more cheapish than it would have been like, okay, she wins the title and then – Rhea comes back, right? Right. So I feel like it adds a little more to the story, and it gives us the third time Liv has come as a runner-up to the world title. Oh, so close, but yet so far away. She's been the runner-up to the Royal Rumble the past two years. She's come close in this. She's a uh, runner-up here. The Chamber, technically, she was the runner-up in the Chamber, despite it Bing, bang, boom, it was over as quick as it looked. So I think her coming up short helps her story more and more to reestablish that when she does get that win. It'll be something special for about two seconds, and then Rhea's coming back to basically steal the thunder away from her. So without spoiling anything, do you think WWE already did because <laughs> – how are we getting it on, Liv? Money in the bank? Is that your money in the bank winner again? I don't know. I don't know if it's money in the bank winner or maybe it's a backlash. That quick? Thing. Maybe. That quick and we make it to which, how long is Rhea? Six to eight? Probably six to eight. So she would have to get to October at the minimum. Three is a rumble. Oh, yeah. That's three is rumble return now. Right. That's what I was thinking. So maybe it's not that quick. Maybe it's sometime in the fall. Liv finally gets to come up and to get the title off of Becky. Which and then Rick. That, that's why I said money in the bank. She gets it. And she lingers with it. We actually have, and we say this all the time, Priest has held it for a year and a half, and we're like, holy shit, get rid of the guy yeah. now. The thing, Priest. Yeah. We may have never held it. Carmella's been the only one. Well, in here's where I say, this is going back to why I said backlash. If Becky's truly gone, they have to get the title off of her in two weeks. So... Right. I, I think you have to give it to Liv at that point. Like, that would be the person. If Liv gets the title at Backlash, or if somebody gets the title at Backlash from Becky, Becky's a leaving. Oh. Yeah. We said it We said it about... We've been that if she didn't win at Rumble. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we, we've been saying that, well, if she didn't win WrestleMania, then she was leaving. Well, now Rhea's injured, so they had to put her as a champion for the time being. So unless she's staying, fantastic. But if she's going, they the next week it has to be off of her. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Or the next month at some point it needs to be off of her. So what, what is there? There's backlash, and then we go to Saudi for the king and queen of the ring. Mm-hmm. Then we have... It's Clash at the Castle. Clash at the that. Castle. Money in the Bank, SummerSlam. Why not? She could lose it. Maybe she is waiting. Clash at the Castle. But Doesn't... is that after her contract's up? Well, I, I know. I mean, dates-wise and everything, we're, we're close. It's in June, right? It is in June. Here. It's like mid-June. June. Yeah. I think it's mid-June. So maybe it's a handshake deal. I'll give you this one until June, and that's yeah. where... You got to drop Liv it. takes it there. You're close to home, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, WWE doesn't love doing things for you at home. At home, yeah. That's her farewell. Maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, there's a lot of and it, injury, injury. There's that whole shift in the parameter, essentially, that, you know, it clearly was going to be real live. We we're, we're going to mm-hmm. get that whole redemption story, yada, yada, yada. Becky in it, Liv can still have a redemption story, but it's not redeeming anything against Becky. So no. I think I think there's Becky wins it because she's a placeholder right now. Not even saying transition. I think there may be a transition champion coming, hmm. which could be Anaya or somebody like that. Yeah, that there's a history with Becky at least to get to. I think Money in the Bank for the women is noteworthy. This you know, not that it's never not noteworthy, but I think it that starts the catalyst to get back to Liv and Rhea at Rumble. Rumble. Well, I think, but to my think, I think Liv Rhea is WrestleMania. Oh yeah, but yeah, we, 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 yeah. The story it, kicks off it, at Rumble. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We're already longer than twenty five, so let's go yeah. through AEW. <laughs> Let's do it. We always do this. <laughs> I know. We said we were going to probably be short, but that when we say we're short, we're fucking long. Long. Every single time. All right. Um, I, I want to jump right to it, essentially. Man, when Tony got his ass kicked and we made reference to it and everything, this was absolutely beautiful. And, and Tony not being trained – just look like a fucking rag doll. Yeah. I, I love that Terry just punched him in the gut with the microphone. Took the melt to drive. He, yeah, I love that he no-sold the <laughs> microphone until about three seconds after, and then remembered, oh, I got punched in the gut. I got to fall down. I have to hold my stomach. Uh, I think everybody wanted the EVP, the EVP trigger. Wouldn't yeah. that... But that would have been more for the Bucks then. And this was supposed to be about Jack. Yeah, this is supposed to be about Jack. So the Meltzer driver did its thing. And now the scapegoat's in the EVP's pocket, basically. I wish Okada didn't come out. Not he, He's part of the group. But there's not history enough for him to worry about this realm of EVP and Jack. Well, I think, I think there's enough to make him be there. Because if they're bringing Jack into the elite, then I think he has to be at least there as a representative, as a member, member. right? And then be the right. Scott right. Hall who points at the move as it's happening. Right? Yeah. So I I think that made sense in that terms. I think what's also going to be the next catalyst is when Omega just shows up next week, just to be there, what's going to happen there? What does that dynamic look like with the scapegoat, with the EVPs, with Okada? I think there's enough history for Okada to hang around just because of the threads that can be pulled for the next level, for the elite level that this is going to get taken. When a match happens, does 
Tony put himself in the corner of Omega against Okada. Yes. But we're going to get a bitch off. This is going to be like NWO. Yep. Bischoff reveal. When the match happens, I think I think there's going to be a multi-man match, double or nothing. The new elite versus the old elite, however they want to frame that. Or it's Omega. I think Hangman shows up. Back. Back. You know, you have three on three. Find a fourth guy. I don't know who you would find as a fourth guy, to be honest. But... You get four guys, four on four, they collide. Khan comes out, costs Kenny the match. Yep. It's exactly where my head was going. I didn't think multi-man. I thought maybe like a solo, you know, not a title match from Okada and Omega. Yeah. Just we're fucking fighting because we've never really liked each other. These punks put you in. I want my spot back. Da 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 da. Omega, I mean, Khan was like, yeah, you're standing up for me in AEW. And then Khan, it's, well, it's got to be now Ibushi. Elite. He's fucking, it, he's, he's elite, he's leading it. It's got to be Ibushi that they bring in, I would assume. Yeah. But I think this is your blood and guts match too. I do too. I think this is going to get heated very quickly. <laughs> it has legs, so yeah. it can last that the, long. The legs are already running. Yeah. Before it's, the body's even built. Yeah. Let's say that. Oh, without a doubt. There there's there's an end before this started. Yes. You know what I mean? The yep. end was and I understand that's a lot how wrestling is written, but this was written as soon as they had a talk with Okada. Mm-hmm. The day that they said, Hey, my name's Tony Khan, you're Okada, this was already written at some point. Yep. And I think everybody expected it at some point. Right. We just They didn't have an idea how they were getting there. But they knew it was going to happen at some point. But I think from their standpoint, it was going to happen immediately because that establishes Okada. This whole thing establishes Okada, which it turns out they didn't need to establish Okada because Okada is just perfect. Right. Um... We talk about Dynasty. I, I don't know if I think – no disrespect to Fletcher. We've already talked. We love Fletcher. I don't think Swerve oh, oh, and Fletcher should have happened. I, I don't I don't think they should have passed in the night. I don't think this should have been Swerve's first match since champion. Why does he have a match before he talks to us, essentially? Yeah. Now he's talking to us tonight as we're recording, essentially, on Collision – not that it hurt Fletcher, because Fletcher's amazing. I don't care. He He's there as right. well. I just didn't want to see this. Uh, yeah. Swerve should have beat up anybody else. Any, I don't really – could have. I don't care who else. But yeah. I think it hurt Fletcher a little bit. Even though he's That's, champ, I think it hurt him. I think Swerve needed to – excuse me, have his champion's promo and get it interrupted more than he needed to just showcase himself in a match and be a fighting champion. I mean, that's just how I think our minds have worked similarly in that regard. But I think to that point, they may not have wanted to pull that trigger because they were trying to do something with Willow later in the night with her championship celebration at Chuck E. Cheese. But, you know, whatever. It was what it was. So I think they were just trying to put something over to get it there. Chuck E. Cheese. Well, you know, they were celebrating at Chuck E. Cheese after the victory. You guys yeah. saw the photos. Yeah. I don't know. Um, the International Gauntlet match. As uh, soon as Osprey came out, was well, anybody else winning? Well, I agree. I think I liked it for the sense that it teased several new matches for Osprey that nobody even fathomed. Like him and O'Reilly. Yeah. Sign me up. Let's go. Let's do that. Let's go down that path. So I think that helped in regards to it. I think that was more of a, we're teasing Osprey and this guy versus this guy or this guy in that. I think it was more to tease matches than anything else with Osprey. 
Is this a title he wins? I think so. I think he wins this title, and it goes right back to the Danielson thing. I think Danielson yeah. takes the title off of him because he can't pull the trigger, and then we bring this full circle at all in, and he ends up and he ends Danielson's full time in ring yeah. career. And as we were speaking, listen, this title and the group that it's with right now is doing nothing for both. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, don't be surprised if this that's the main event and the world title is defended the next week in a all in or all out Chicago. Yeah, I think that's going to be 100 percent what happens there. I do, too. Yep. Jericho sucked. Uh, Mox retaining against Hobbs. Listen, let's just throw this out there. We throw this out there each and every time a title from across seas comes over here. It is not going to be lost on a weekly TV show in America. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it was Mox against Danielson, who does go over, or Mox against Shinsuke when he gets here, or Mox against anybody. It's not going to be lost here. This right. was just to say, Mox is back and he's got a title. He's going to beat some ass. And poor yeah. Hobbs, that'll be the one that got his ass beat. Yeah. Beat. But to that point, he's got the title. Oh, yeah. For IWGP. Right. So how long does he keep it for now? I say for Bindor. Yeah. That I say is where they, it could – Yeah, I say they do the title swap there. The question is who's – he dropping it too at that point. I don't know. Yeshda. But is that the one at double or nothing though? Because that's what that feels like. It does. I don't know. Ooh. Watch we're talking out our ass and it's Osprey Mox at Forbidden Door for the title. Because Osprey likes to travel too. Yeah, Osprey wants to travel. Eight hours home, eight hours wrestle, eight hours back home. Did we we talked about the the Jack Perry thing? Um, we talked about Chuck E. Cheese. Deeb, Deeb in line for a title shot. Looking that way, doesn't it? I would be. Okay. I'm also intrigued by the fact that she came out. In a similar scenario with Anna Jay involved, so is Anna Jay her understudy? I think that well happened for real though. That's the actual learning tree I would like to see. Yeah, I mean because that'll be interesting. The techniques, the how they foster that and build that up with Anna Jay. But I think Dave's the next in line for the title. Are we getting a tag match first, Dave Anna Jay? Storm may maybe to not have to take the title to the next pay per view. Waiting maybe for Tony has had a, a lengthy run this time. Mm-hmm. Nothing against Deeb. I don't think Deeb needs to be champion. I would love for her to get her flowers to be champion. Yeah, I just think Deeb is no more than a month champion when she is. I don't think Dave ever gets the title, to be honest. I think she's just there to be the veteran. Right. That could no, be a threat. She completely is the trainer. Everybody yeah. knows that. Well, no, that, no. But, I mean, like, just on TV, she can be the veteran threat, but she's never, though, I'm going to sniff the title type person. And going off of that, I think the other flip side of it, too, is that tag match, I think, happens on a dynamite quickly yeah to kind of throw it away because i think mariah and tony may be more later june july blow off type thing is she being the one that's going to be tony like i i really don't think it's anybody but mariah right now. i think it is i think i think she is it doesn't matter if jamie comes back Britt comes back monet is taking herself to a different title now which we all thought it would have been the other way I, I th- it's just built up for Mariah to get this anymore. Yeah, agreed. I I think it's only I think it's only Mariah, and it plays right into what we said. Six months she be the understudy, she gains her trust, then she yep. turns on her. 
you know, I, I'm, I've always loved Mariah Pryor when she was on, well, she was in, still in Independence before she went overseas to do her stick over there. But yeah, I've been a Mariah fan. I, I'd be fine with that. The downfall, again, I think Mariah would be a month or so, I think. And I know we keep saying this about Jamie or Britt or something. When they make a return, they also have to make a big impact. And I think either one of them walking in the door, I think one of them has to have a title within a month. Because yeah. Britt, I will still say this, I've taken her away from pillarship a little bit. Um, Britt would be okay. I think Jamie has lost so much from this injury, and it's sad because injuries mm-hmm. shouldn't do that. I just think she's lost way more, that she just has to come in and be dominant and just crush and take a title instantly. Yeah, get she back. needs the instant satisfaction to yeah. get back her what she had gained before that. Yeah, it I was she that. won it and it was fucking ripped off of her quickly. Yeah, she had no time with it. No, she had no time to run with it whatsoever. So that's all I got. That's all I got. I did it like normal. We yep. always go over. Went longer than we thought. We promised you a short show, but we're here to yeah. keep our word of longs. <laughs> All right. Um, Colin Spade a Spade. We're going to wrap this up quickly. What do you have going on this week, buddy? Uh, you know, this week we're getting ready for backlash coming up. Uh, odds and ends, getting things ready, getting things moving. Nothing, nothing crazy on the horizon. What about you? If I don't cut my field, I'm going to have to find myself <laughs> from the borough because – it, it just, when there's a nice day, it seems like I had something to do, or I had to go to a baseball game, or something, you know. Yeah. It's raining right now. Clearly, I wasn't cutting the grass today anyway, because I'm going to edit this and put it up instantly. It's a live show, essentially. Um, I hope it dries out by tomorrow, but it, as we were talking, I was looking. I don't know if it's gonna. Yeah. I don't fucking know when I'm going to cut the grass again during the week, because it's there's a the tournament rain. coming up. There's a little bit more rain coming up. If it's raining on a tournament day, when the hell does that get pushed to that my only day would have been open? I have uh, a late interview this week. It's crazy. It is. You're a busy man. It's busy because I don't want to be, but busy because I love it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's exactly it. You do it because you love it. If you didn't love it, then you'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> We love you, though, here on Can Crushers, guys. Thank you for the support forever. You guys continue to make it awesome. Listen, I looked, because I usually don't do this, so I'm going to be transparent. I looked at numbers, and it, 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 we don't gloat about numbers, but I don't know. I don't know where we're finding everybody. It continues to grow, Jenks, and I, I saved it to the end. That It's unbelievable how many people listen to us ramble about shit in our lives and wrestling. I truly thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate it. I'm glad to hear it's still growing. You still love us, even though we screw up half your town's names half the time anyways, trying to remember them. But Council thank you. Council Bluff, right? It is Council I, Bluff. I believe it's Council, Council Bluff. I think so, or I'm making that up. I'd have to, I, I have know to find Toronto, that. who's our biggest fan as of right now. Yeah. But it is Council Bluff, Iowa. See, yeah, it's on my note. We're good. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. You're a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them. Because you never know.